My bio mum's husband offered to adopt me. I'm already adopted. I am 18, non-binary. I don't remember the exact ages of my bio mum and her husband, but they're in their late 40s. I'll call them Claire and Daniel. For some background, Claire had me and my brother while she was an addict and had a lot of untreated issues. Bipolar, BPD, schizophrenia, etc. I won't go into a lot of detail because it's very heavy, but long story short, she married a bad man. And because of his and her actions, she lost custody of us when we were five and we eventually got adopted when we were eight. She divorced that man and is now married to Daniel. Now onto the story. Claire at the time had gotten diagnosed with a terminal illness, so I'd agreed to fly out there to visit her. I'd never gotten super close with Daniel, but we were relatively friendly. At first, the visit was okay. Everyone was acting normally. But then things kind of started to go downhill. Claire asked if I would consider moving out there for the time she had left, and I said I would consider it. She seemed to be happy with that answer at first, along with Daniel, but then it started going downhill. They started acting like I was definitely moving in and started trying to make all of these decisions before I'd even decided, like wanting to go to the social security office to see if I still qualified for insurance, etc. It was hard for me to push back on it and set boundaries because I'm autistic and communication is hard, so I just kind of brushed it off. One night, me and Claire were having a deep conversation and Daniel joined in, which led to him offering to adopt me. I explained that I was already adopted and that I did not want to be adopted again and he seemed to drop the issue. Over the next few days though, he started getting more authoritative, I guess. Whenever I talked about something, he would correct me, even if he was obviously wrong. It even got to the point when I was trying to bond with him and talk to him about my trans experience, he straight up said that I should try to be comfortable being a woman and that he didn't want me to get gender affirming surgery that I needed to fully experience being a woman before I decided. I deflected from the topic, but felt very uncomfortable. When I flew home and told my mum everything, she texted Claire saying that she basically needed to take a chill pill and that Daniel needed to stop inserting himself in our lives like he was a parent. The last thing I heard about the situation is that when my brother visited later, Daniel told him something basically to the effect that I was influenced easily and that's why I'm non-binary. I haven't talked to him since besides saying hi when I'm on the phone with Claire. I mean, the strange thing is that your bio mom's husband doesn't already know that you're adopted. Unless he does know and he just wants to like re-adopt you or cancel the adoption that has already happened and take over. You know, like when a manager gets sacked, is he the new manager? Is he the caretaker manager? Is that what he wants to be? I think once again, it's, it's, it's been the case with multiple stories here. You just need to stay away from these entitled parents. That really is like the key thing. That is the common denominator throughout every entitled parent story ever, realistically. Just stay away from them. But uh, yeah, I think it's much harder when they are your own family. I mean, we also have to, of course, talk about the fact that he's saying, oh yeah, don't transition, man. Uh, well, not man, but you know what I mean. Don't transition. You need to experience what it's like to be a woman. What? What is that? I mean, what is that? At what age do you have full experience of being a woman? That's my question. And again, it makes me think of an episode the other day where somebody said, you're not a lesbian. You just haven't had the right D yet. It's along those sort of lines. It's crazy. Now, someone's actually commented down below that they have a creepy feeling it's not going to be adoption, but actually a relationship, especially with him not wanting you to transition. Now, I don't know about that. But then they've also said, do you have an uncanny resemblance to your bio mum. So I guess this person is saying, once your bio mum passes away, he might want to get with you and replace her with someone that has similar DNA and looks similar. If that's the case, that is mental. I I wouldn't suggest that myself, but, oh, apparently actually just looking, OP has said that in the past, they've talked about their sex life to me, talked about their relationship. And when he was talking about wanting me to have the full experience of a woman, He was talking about the topic no one should be talking about with their wife's kid that they barely know. Okay, that's just, yeah, really, really creepy. Uh, I've had enough. My husband of seven years, we are both 30 years old, is really angry that I refuse to quit my job to become a stay-at-home wife slash girlfriend. Not sure what to do. This was originally posted on April the 2nd, 2023. I love my husband and he is an amazing man, but we have flaws like everyone else. We both aged out of foster care and met at a youth fulfillment program. Basically a work camp that helps kids with no families learn the fundamentals for living, finances, certificates as needed. We were both 18 and stayed in contact after the program ended. 
He made it clear he liked me, but I was truly petrified of men at that point in my life due to past experiences and I rejected him a bit harshly. I reached out to apologize and we became friends. Then a year or two later, I saw he posted on Snapchat that he was in my area. I asked if he'd want to go on a date so I could practice being comfortable around guys and he agreed. He never made a move, never touched me, never made weird eye contact. If I said no, he didn't ask a second time, not even as a suggestion. We went on these platonic dates for months with nothing happening and one day I asked for a hug and then asked for a kiss and he asked me to be his girlfriend. We got married a year after and our seven year anniversary is around the corner. We agreed that we would not even think about having kids until we were older since both of us were the product of young parents. We've really just only focused on getting by on using as little money as possible and saving up every dime to buy a house. Thankfully, we got our house a few months ago and we were both able to quit our second jobs and for the first time only work regular nine to fives. Yay! I've discovered I really like gardening and baking and I love having a real home. We've been discussing adding to our family by having a baby and I feel very ready to be a mum. Scared still, yes, but ready. But my husband brought up how sad I would be if I had to quit since I've worked so hard. I told him I had zero plans to quit my job. I'd only take maternity leave. Plus, my company allows maternal and paternal remote options for one year after birth so I can just work from home if needed. I know it's a lot to do with a newborn, but giving up the security of my paycheck is simply not an option. He told me this was what we worked for, to make our own perfect family opposite from what ours were like. And I was blindsiding him by changing my plans. And I told him, no plan has changed. I can have a career and be a mum. Plenty of women do it. He doesn't have to quit his job to be a dad, so why should I? He said it wouldn't work for a baby's needs. And I told him, okay, since I make more money than you do, why don't you quit? And I go back to work remotely after healing from birth. That way, we have both hands on deck and we don't have a severe loss of income as I make $89,000 per year and he makes $52,000 per year. He mentioned that if I trusted him fully, this shouldn't be a problem. I told him I trust him, but I don't trust our current economy. However, I left out that I really do genuinely think quitting my job with no savings, wiped out by getting the house, and relying on a man is absolutely stupid. He had plans made previously with his parents and had to leave, so he said we'd pick the conversation back up when he gets home, but he's very, very upset, madder than I've ever seen him, and I don't understand why he just assumed I would quit. Not only do I not understand it, but it makes me trust him a lot less than I did yesterday. I have a bad habit of running for the hills when problems come up. I'm not going to lie, this is making me really nervous. Thank you for reading all of this if you have. I'm open ears as to what could be going through his mind or why he's thinking like this. It really just doesn't seem logical to me. He's been watching all of these videos of stay-at-home wives and girlfriends and I feel like this is influencing him a lot. Okay, so that is it for the initial post. Let's get into some relevant comments. Someone said, so this is just my opinion. I think his childhood and upbringing trauma is playing into this a lot. This doesn't sound like a situation where he wants to control you, like in some other posts, but more like a situation where he's idealized what a perfect family might look like, and so he wants to give his children that. You two might need to go to couples counseling for a while. Figure it out with a therapist to help intercede and help him understand. Financial security is important. Hold off getting pregnant until you guys have been in couples therapy for six months or so and have begun working towards some common ground. As for him going off to meet his parents, is it possible having them back in your lives is contributing to this need for a picture-perfect family? Just curious. OP replied to this. Thank you for this comment. I've been thinking about it for most of the day now. The parents he went to see are foster parents, but there were some legal issues going on and they had to release guardianship. He lived with them from the age of 10 to 15 until ending up back at a group home and aging out. But they always stayed in contact and he considers them as parents. But they never lost contact, so I'm not sure if that would be it. But he didn't start seeing them in person again until two or three years ago. I've never thought he was controlling, but we've talked in the past about this type of thing. And I've always told him I would never want to be a stay-at-home mum. Maybe at most until they're in elementary, if he was making a lot more money, but we're not at the income level slash networking level where I can get away with having five year gaps in my employment. Neither of us have attempted therapy again, and most of our experiences were less than pleasant with DHR and child services counselors, so I'll see if he's open to the idea. 
Okay, interesting start to this one. Yeah, I don't know really what to say other than the fact that this clearly isn't like a, an economic issue in his mind. He isn't saying, okay, we can now afford to do this because I earn loads of money. You don't earn as much. Not that he'd necessarily say this, but if he's thinking, okay, maybe for financial reasons, having a kid, you know, we might have to pay for a nanny or something, but I can manage on my own working. Maybe you deal with the kids for a little bit and then come back into employment it'll be fine, etc. It's not that because you, OP, earn so much more than him. So you're right. If it was the case that he was really after one parent to stay at home and he wanted that for your children, then he would have to be the one to do that, right? Surely for the financial security of your home. But that isn't the case. So yeah, it's clear that he, he's got some sort of, you know, picture in his mind of his ideal for a family that involves you both putting yourself into a pretty tough position financially like, why would you do that? Why would you leave a job paying $90,000 a year and he stay in his job? It makes no sense. So yeah, I, I don't know exactly why he has this idea in his mind and also how you've had this conversation before. You've said to him that you're not going to do this. You're not going to quit if you have children. Yet he still thinks that you are. And now he's angry with you for, for not. It's very, very strange. It's I think a little bit more serious than it sounds like i don't know people saying yeah you can just get through this and do some counseling and work it out it's weird that he would even still have this in his mind at all given that you've spoken about this seemingly quite a lot and you've been pretty adamant that you're not going to do this so yeah it's weird however of course there is an update to get into the first update of this one and all i'll say is it's pretty crazy here we go. Now, this first update was posted on July 18th, 2023. So over two months from the original post. It's been a few days since my husband came home and told me he met a girl at work and that she's a better woman than me and that she has a son already and will be a stay at home wife or girlfriend or whatever the frick. He gets his happy ending, I guess. He texted me right before I got off work and asked me to pick up food from one of our usual date night spots. I got home and noticed his car had boxes in it and a woman I didn't know. I tried opening the door, but it was locked and she just looked at me. What little was left of our savings, he took. And both of our cats. I didn't see this coming at all. I haven't told any of my friends yet. His adoptive parents have been dropping me off food that I can't even force myself to eat. I haven't cried yet. I'm kind of still in shock. I wish I had a family to run to, but for now, the internet has to do. I haven't answered any of his calls or texts. He keeps trying to check in, ask if I'm okay. How the frick would I be okay? I never thought he'd cheat. I asked him to promise if there was ever someone else, he would just tell me as soon as he knew, but they've been together at least six months. So while he was calling me selfish for not wanting to put in my two weeks and be a stay at home wife, he was dating her the entire time planning a future with her the entire time. Now it all makes sense. I feel stupid. I should have taken everyone's advice more literally. When I asked him to go to therapy, he wouldn't. His parents think he's having some type of mental break. I should have stayed afraid of him and avoided him. I should have chosen a better outcome for myself. I just feel like the same girl that no one wants to love anymore all over again. I know what he did isn't my fault. I know I could never stop him. And really, do I want a man who doesn't want me? Never but that just doesn't stop it from hurting. Wow, there we go. I'm not gonna lie. I, I did kind of think that something like this might have been happening and that's sort of what I was implying in, in my comments after the original post. It, it was just too crazy. It was too out of context, I think, for it to have not been without other reason. Not like, you know, being a hindsight merchant, but there you go. Very, very sad and yeah, shocking, but, but wow. Perhaps not entirely unexpected from the outside looking in. <sighs> It's still crazy. Let's have a look at what some other people are saying. Someone said, He wanted you to be reliant on him and didn't want you to be smart enough to find out about his affair. See if you can find some more info about his affair partner. Go nuclear on them both. You're still young. You can find a new love. Opie replied, Once I found out she was 20, I stopped caring. Oh my goodness me. A 10-year age gap at the age of 30. Oh, goodness. Their karma will come one day on its own. I doubt I'd be able to stop myself from having to do hard time in prison if I ever see them again. Someone else said, let's be real. She grabbed onto him with her kid and he'll leave her just as fast as he left OP when he realizes he doesn't actually want what he thinks he wants. Mostly because he'll realize it's not what he thinks or it's way too hard for him to do. OP says, his mum, adoptive mum, called me and is already coordinating to drop the cats back off. 
He didn't know his new girlfriend is allergic. At least I get a little laugh already. Oh my god. That just shows how little he knows her. My word. If he didn't even know that, the same person replies, imagine what other surprises he's going to discover. Yes, exactly. What did he do? Just grab the first woman who'd agree with his idea of what a relationship looks like and say, she'll do? Yeah, to be honest, it does kind of feel that way. Okay, now let's get into the second update. This was posted on July 27th, 2023. I really want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of the people who reached out to me with well wishes, especially other spouses who experienced similar. It helps so much more than you could ever know. There have been a few things that have happened, and honestly, I'm exhausted in every way possible. So the input from folks has been really useful in organizing my thoughts and keeping an open mind. I couldn't help it, but for days I compared us and wondered what the frick he could have been thinking until I realized she is a carbon copy of his biological mother, or at least the stories he heard about her since she died when he was five. I hate that I feel bad for him still, even after what he's done, but we offered him support for his thoughts. We urged him to go to therapy. I even offered to pay for it myself, and he was too prideful. I lost both of my parents too, at an older age with even more core memories with them. So it wasn't a boat he was in alone, but he chose to act like it was and wallow in self-pity. He called me on our seven year wedding anniversary, minutes after midnight, whispering apologies and saying he feels so guilty. I asked for what, and he just said, well, you know, what we're going through. I told him, no, it's what you're doing. We are going through nothing. I was abandoned by my husband, exposed to God knows what, while you were screwing her and coming back home to me. We were still having sex like every single day, so I made sure he knew just how disgusting I thought he was. Then he got angry and told me he only started cheating because I couldn't follow his lead. Sir, look where you led yourself. Our entire marriage, I've pushed him career-wise. Heck, the job he has right now, I apply to on his behalf. Meanwhile, I'm pretty sure he doesn't or didn't even know what my full-time job title is. I pushed him to reach out to the adoptive parents when he started getting family obsessed, but neither of us were ready for a kid. He went on about how I broke my promise first when I decided I didn't want to be a real mum by not quitting. That I was turning his adoptive parents against him because they are refusing to meet his new girlfriend. He blamed me again and then had the nerve to say that this could all be put on pause if I can learn how to make decisions that benefit a family and not myself. Guys, you might have heard that there. I genuinely just cringed reading the end of that sentence. Wow. I asked point blank if he was insinuating that we could get back together if I quit my job. He told me, yes, I will always love you, but you make things more difficult than needed. I hung up and blocked him on everything. I spent the rest of the night hugging wine in the bathtub and wondering what the heck kind of person I'd been sharing my heart with. The next day, he went public with their relationship, posting a photo to Instagram, and most of our mutual friends reached out, with my closest friends commenting less than kind things on the photo. As it turns out, he and his new girlfriend have been together for seven, almost eight months. She is 20. Her son is around two. I reached out to her ex, the father of her son, who she'd left to be with my ex-husband. She moved out in the middle of the day and took their kid, so he was just as blindsided, if not more, than I was. We met up and went for a walk and stopped by a bar. We literally cried, laughed, hugged each other, sang songs way too loudly, and sobbed in public like a lunatic, but it helped so much. We also made sure to exchange evidence for any court battles. I'm a little iffy towards him for now considering that they had quite the age gap. She was 17 when they met and he was 26. He said she lied about her age and they met at a college party and the next thing he knew, she was pregnant. He gave her money for an abortion, but she came back with baby clothes instead. So he tried to do the right thing and moved her in with him. Also, she's not actually allergic to cats. She just hates them. She was also very aware that he was married and has been to the house multiple times. He admitted he had cheated on her before their son had been born while she was pregnant, but that she didn't tell him she knew until after she had moved out with their son. He said he was still texting her every day, not just about their son, but also about possibly working things out. He wants her back, but she seems to be head over heels for my husband just like I was. I told him good luck, but yeah, not the direction I'm going in at all. This time he made his bed and he will lay in it for good. Our chances of reconciliation are zero. I've never accepted someone back into my life after a betrayal and it won't start now. 
At first, I wanted to make sure the divorce was going to be short and as simple as possible, even if it meant giving up some things. But after that conversation, I've decided I'm fighting tooth and nail for everything I can possibly get. I live in a no-fault divorce state, but my state does have special laws for adultery. Can still sue for it here. And the divorce attorney I've consulted said it looks pretty good that I won't have to pay him alimony. He also told me to look into every single banking transaction in my accounts as he did not think they got an apartment on his income without some extra cushion, aka my money, and he was right. Last year, my ex-husband told me he got really into stock trading and if he could invest some of my money as well. Guess who was never doing any stock trading and the screenshots he showed me were all fake or pulled from somewhere else and he'd actually been sending that money to his girlfriend or saving it for their new place. I've been pretty enraged since finding that out. He asked his adoptive parents to ask me to allow him visitation rights to see the cats after he had to give them back once he realized his new girlfriend is allergic to them. I relayed that he needs to first run me my freaking money and then take it up with the judge. I didn't think visitation was a real thing for pets, but according to my lawyer, it very much is. Oh, wow. I officially filed for divorce yesterday and he emailed me quite the colorful email about how selfish and bitter I am for not putting my pride aside and being so fast to file for divorce and refusing to let him stop by the house to see the cats that now he's accusing me of cheating. Oh my gosh. I read somewhere that you never really know someone until you're divorcing them and I can truly confirm that is true. I felt like you guys deserve some sort of update considering how much support I was given. I can't share more details for now, but really, thank you all again. But don't worry, guys. On September the 11th, 2023, we got one final update. Right, first, OP just summarizes everything very briefly that has happened so far. I was stupid and got married at 23, she says. We met in a foster youth program. Long story short, I didn't want to be a stay-at-home mum since I was the breadwinner. He found someone younger and dumber who would. I had to pick up another job to make sure I'd be able to afford the house on my own. But when my regional lead from my main job heard about it, they gave me a promotion that actually cut down my work time and gives me more money. I still kept the second job. It keeps my mind busy. Well, that is good to hear. Most of my work days were spent in collars and heels, but the side job is an overpriced membership only gym that I definitely can't afford without my employee discount. I've had a few guys approach me since I filed the divorce paperwork, but I just wasn't feeling up to it. And even though I stopped wearing my ring the day he moved out, I still felt guilty, like I was betraying him. He was the only man I've ever been with, so spending a decade learning everything about one person and now having to switch gears is really dang hard. But one of the guys I see often at the gym asked if I'd be his date to a seminar he's sponsoring. I said no at first, and he accepted the no very gracefully. I saw him a few days later, sparked up some conversation, and asked if maybe we could try a lunch date. Just us, first. I was fully prepared for him to tell me, nope, you're too late. But he instead cancelled the plans he'd already made. We met up a few hours later, and honestly, my face hurt from laughing and smiling so much. He's a pretty charming man and has a lot of random knowledge about safari animals that gives me the same comfort that watching animal documentaries does. He asked me out for a dinner the next day, and when he let me know he was in my neighborhood earlier that day, I asked if he wanted to stop by and grab a breakfast sandwich before I left for work. I have a nine-year-old cat who hates like 99% of people, but she loved him and even let him touch her belly. He dropped me off lunch at work and we met up for dinner and ever since we've been texting almost nonstop. I've never felt this comfortable with someone so fast in my life. It's scary, but I've already told him that we're separated. I haven't told him the nitty gritty details, just that it didn't work out and we outgrew each other. But the seminar was this past weekend and I went as his date. It was a great, great night. I tried champagne for the first time, had the best conversations with some of his associates and did a little professional networking too. The tomboy teenage girl I used to be would never believe this, but more than anything, I'm grateful for the support of my friends who got me through the tough nights so I could make it to the good ones. Only up from here, I guess. So there we go, a happy ending to this one. Well, well, not an ending actually, I guess more of a beginning. Let's see what the people of Reddit are saying down below in the comments. My advice, your pets know you sometimes better than yourself. I have several. But my point is, go for it at a comfortable pace. Your cat gave him the green light, so do baby steps and let this bond grow. I'd be a jerk if I kept going here because you're obviously smart, so go have fun and let life give you what you need. This guy sounds like a winner in my book. 
Oh, we will be keeping it completely casual, OP replied. I don't want this bond to grow too much. I think it would be a bit tacky for us to date either way for other reasons. It's just nice to have someone to laugh and smile with. I plan on being single for sure for at least the next three years. I owe it to myself. And here is a final comment from OP. A marriage is only valuable if it's mutual and both parties are honest. One day I will have a real marriage, but what I had wasn't that. Fair enough, you know, I wasn't actually expecting that penultimate comment from OP. It did sound as if, you know, she just found someone that was great and was moving on pretty quickly and it was going to go from there and be good. But actually, what she's saying is probably a bit more sensible than that. Taking some time just to relax after being completely blindsided out of nowhere after seven years of seemingly happy marriage and then that just happens. I mean, it's crazy. If any of you have any experience of that, get in the comments down below. Explain to the people, me and everyone else listening and watching right now, what happened and, and what was the, the conclusion? Because it's a pretty crazy thing for, for someone that hasn't had that experience to consider as a possibility in life. But yeah, I think sensible from OP to just chill, have some fun, you know? There's nothing to say that you can't be with this man in, in three years, but yeah, just relax in the meantime and don't make any drastic decisions. I mean, the one thing that I definitely do hope, as much as, as OP has a great life, is that her ex has a terrible one and that his relationship fails terribly. That'd be great. And it would be great karma. So I hope that happens. But yeah, overall, a promotion, doing less work and getting promoted, that's great. And meeting some guy who your cat really gets along with, that's also great. So yeah, best of luck in the future and I hope everything works out. I know I'm the jerk here. I found out my streamer boyfriend was cheating with internet girls and I took his whole setup away. This happened last week and I'm super petty and still angry, so sorry for the rant. I am a 25 year old woman and my boyfriend, well ex, who is 28, got into an accident last year. He's still trying to get a job, but it hurts him to stand for long periods of time. He currently gets unemployment, but otherwise I pay for everything. We have a lease together and I pay for most of it. During this time, I was thrilled that he was bringing in $100 to $200 a month streaming on Twitch because looking for remote work has been terrible. He's pretty popular in his game, has his own Discord, stuff like that. He told me up front that he doesn't talk about me on Twitch or Discord because girls make up a good amount of his audience. I've seen some of the comments on Twitch, pretty usual simpy stuff which he warned me about. I get it. I used to stream on and off too. I noticed him spending more and more time streaming, but there was no increase in money. He stopped coming to bed with me too. I stayed up late one night, pretending to sleep. At about 2 a.m. it got quiet, but I heard him talking. I heard him say, check your Snapchat, and yeah, I have to be quiet because my roommate is asleep. Roommate? I went to the living room and pulled his headset out of the jack. It was a woman's voice. He powered his computer off and started saying, what the frick? I told you it's how I make money. Blah, blah, blah. I told him to open Discord on his phone and show me his messages. He refused. Maintaining the illusion of being single for the sake of work, I understand. But what he's actually doing, a little graphic, sorry, in my eyes is cheating. I grabbed his phone and locked myself in the bathroom. He didn't change his password, so I got into his snap and Discord. All girls, Nudes and videos saved on Snapchat of them doing stuff together. There were Discord messages saying he can't voice chat because his roommate is so loud and annoying. Conveniently, these were hours I'm home from work. All these girls seem to all think he's in a relationship with them. I didn't get to see too much else because he was banging on the door. Now here is where I know I'm the jerk, but I don't feel bad. I grabbed a few things and left. I went back in two days with my previous ex and two best friends. I'm super petty and he's always been insecure about my ex. We were no contact because of it, but I didn't hesitate to tell him everything. I also rented a small U-Haul. Not gonna lie, if you're gonna humiliate me behind my back, I'll humiliate you to your face. I get it, it made him feel unsafe having a guy he's insecure about standing there keeping me safe, but I still don't regret it. I then mowed him the electric Jew and wrote it on the message. I grabbed all of my stuff, including the ring light and mic he uses to stream. His successful streaming career can help him pay for new ones. The router's mine too. The desk is mine. His computer went on the floor. The bed's mine. He can have the couch though. The air fryer's mine. I pretty much took everything I outright paid for or bought. I told the landlord I won't be renewing if he chooses to renew the lease and I paid final rent. Luckily, the lease is up in two months. I really hope he rots. I cooked. I cleaned. I supported his streaming career. I was so naive. 
I knew people could be like this, but I never expected it. I haven't gamed since then. I'm stick to my stomach. My switch is laying in the bottom of my suitcase. I haven't logged in to feed my pals in Pal World. I hope this hasn't ruined gaming for me forever. He hasn't even bothered to reach out. Probably playing the victim. Okay, so there we go. That is the post, but OP has actually left a couple of comments down below. First of all, she says, wow, thank you for all the comments. Obviously, they're extremely positive, as you guys can probably imagine. She says, I guess I was tripped up that if I was a guy doing this to a cheating girl, it would definitely come off abusive in some way. So I figured I'm being a jerk, but I don't care. But in reality, I think we can all agree. There's no way that OP is the jerk here at all. This is just good karma. Now, here's a further edit from OP. This is my last petty action. In the game he plays, there are competitive 50v50 wars. Each account is locked, I believe, for 48 hours after each war to prevent the same 100 people being in every war. To counter it, the players all share Steam passwords with no 2FA so they can loophole the system. Well, he didn't change his password. I dropped all his items on the ground, handed his gold to random people passing by, and spammed some gross stuff on global chat because this company is notorious for permabanning and saying won't respond to you again if you try to pester them. Bye-bye 10,000 plus hours. And then one final edit. You guys are insane. This post got circulated in some discourse from the game. I still won't confirm identity, by the way. It's his choice to own up or not. He ended up refunding my Venmo with a message asking to talk, so I will do that tomorrow. I may or may not update, but either way, thanks for all the support, everyone. It felt so good to get it off my chest. And as of today, at the time of recording, we haven't had a future update. Let me just check. When was this originally posted? Yeah, just 19 hours ago at the time of recording. I want to give you guys the freshest stories on the internet. So um, yeah, there probably isn't time for an update. But if you want me to, I will look out. And if there is another one, I can give that to you guys. Just drop me a comment down below. But yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? That OP thought she was the jerk here. When she's the one being cheated on and all she's doing is saying, no, I'm done with this relationship and I'm taking back the stuff that I bought that is mine. doesn't matter if you're lending it to your boyfriend to, to stream. And by the way, is he really justifying chatting to other girls and not saying that he has a girlfriend because he's making one to $200 a month? I mean really no disrespect it's it's an okay amount of money but you cannot even get close to living on that amount of money let's just all be honest here so yeah saying that oh i need to maintain this facade that i'm single because i'm making so much money from these simping girls online absolute bull just clearly an excuse to cheat all right now for our second story of this episode this one involves another cheater now this was originally posted on october the 16th 2023 on the subreddit r surviving infidelity with the title my wife just told me she's been seeing someone for the past six months been married eight years five and six year old kids i've been madly in love the whole time as she's an amazing person and mother literally keeps the family together and is just spectacular truly she was showing me something on her phone and i saw a text come in saying i love you more And I asked who it was. She explained it was a co-worker that she's been helping out. And I thought nothing more of it. That day, we had a lot of family over to celebrate our daughter's birthday. And it was a wonderful time. Some stayed overnight. So the next day, after a wonderful weekend, getting company out and putting the kids down, my wife said she needs to tell me something. Well, that I love you more was not from her co-worker. Well, at least not the one she explained it was. But I'm not sure because she's not sharing any details regarding the other person. She told me that six months ago when I was in a dark place and have since come out of it, no drugs except weed and booze, which we both partake in, she found love in someone else. Love that I wasn't providing in our relationship. If I have feelings for someone else, I'm not sure that I should be married. It's not fair to you or me. I never planned for this to happen, but now that it's a reality, we need to deal with it. She explained that she wasn't looking for someone else. It just happened. A friendship that bloomed into more. She's also told me that they have not been intimate and explained that it's not a sexual relationship. She says that life is too short and she wants to be happy. She's proud of all the changes I've made and I've always been a good dad, but I've grown into a great daddy and my kids and I have never been closer. However, she wants to be 100% happy and the changes I've made haven't gotten her there, so she's seeking something else. She says this person may not be the 100% answer. However, she worries that I'm at the best spot I can be in and it's not enough. Although she's not giving me specifics. We've had a beautiful, loving relationship. 
We know that we're good together and we have our stuff in line. We'd be the last couple that folks would think this is happening to. So I'm devastated. Absolutely, totally ripped apart and I don't know what to do. We own a house together that we're making payments on. I carry no debt besides said home and she's in the same position. We had a perfect life together and I'm suddenly being blindsided by this six month relationship where she has feelings for the guy and thinks it's best that we split. I have no idea how to move forward. I've told her she needs to let her family know what's going on so that I can tell mine. It's her cat to let out of the bag. I'm just so sad for our kids. When we were dating and in marriage, cheating was the one thing that would break us. We both come from broken families. It was something I never wanted for our kids. I just feel so hollow and broken. She is or was my everything and I'm so thankful for the 10 years we've been together. But I think the writing is on the wall and I'm helpless. It's all up to her. I'm broken into a million pieces. All right, extremely sad start to this one, but let's get straight into the update. This comes five months later on March the 7th, 2024. So pretty recently at the time of recording. She was caught by me catching a text at my daughter's birthday party saying, I love you more. When I asked again what that was about, she said it was a co-worker that she's been helping. Now, because all the family and friends were there, I didn't push it. But again, later the next day, she came clean saying that she's been in a relationship for six months She refused to tell me who it was with or what they've done. I was devastated back then, absolutely destroyed. And five months later, I still am. So we spent some time apart and she continued her relationship with him. I did some digging in the meantime and looking at the phone records, it was our son's baseball coach. I called her out on it and she still continued the relationship. I saw a lawyer. He told me to not leave the house or the kids and either try to work it out or said it's time to leave and see a therapist. My therapist says that she is a narcissist and that I should protect myself, protect my kids and run. Come December, she said she had cut it off with him and wanted to try with me again. I gave her all the effort in the world, but I don't feel like her soul's been in it. She's not overcompensating or has even truly apologized for what she's done. I've also got an access to her photos. I am the admin on the family Google account and she doesn't know that I've seen all I have. She framed a picture of him and had it, or maybe still does, at her desk. I found naked selfies she sent him that I haven't even received. I found a picture of his naked butt in our beach condo, which I thought was a neutral space as we were sharing it during our time apart. I slept on those same sheets. I know that she was at a fancy restaurant with someone else. She screenshots all these deep love quotes that I know aren't about me. There's just so much that lives rent free in my head. She has a white bracelet with one black bead that she now wears every day. I've called her out on it. She lied once saying it was from her mum, and up to last week said, well, my best friend has the matching one. Well, actually her affair partner wears an all black one with a white bead. I know what that represents. Again, she doesn't know that I've seen all these things. So now to the current day. I can't place it or find anything that suggests that she's still with him, but I know she used Snapchat often and is secretive with her phone. Whenever I bring up the affair, this blows up because I said I'd try not to bring it up and get over it, but I simply can't. I'm not rubbing it in, but it does come up when we argue, which is almost every week. We do really well for a bit, up to and including intimacy, but then something happens and we go back to rubbish. She cancelled our babysitter for trivia this past Tuesday. And for this Friday, where I got tickets for us to see a show, she doesn't want to go because I can't get over her affair. Her parents, mum and stepfather, both cheated on their spouses for each other and support my wife. And they both call and text me saying that it's unfair that I bring up her affair. Oh my gosh, how toxic is that? The pictures of him live rent free in my head almost constantly. I can't get past what she's done no matter how hard I try. I don't know what to do as she's trying to make me the bad guy. And I'm like, I've been here the whole time. I didn't fall in love with someone else. I just don't understand and I'm an emotional train wreck. Okay, and then three days later, we got this final update. Well, long story short, I literally just caught her at the family condo with the affair guy. And I have photos and videos of his truck, his belongings in the home, and her coming out of the master where he stayed behind a closed door. I also went into our shared car that she drove and it was left unlocked in the parking garage with an open high noon on the cup holder and her wallet and belongings still in it. She came home and tried to talk. It was a calm conversation, but she kept saying it was my fault. And if I communicated with her last night, I grey rocked her, 
maybe she wouldn't have been with him so i communicated that i will be home later this afternoon slash evening so she's unexpectedly watching the kids today sorry i have to just stop for a second the gaslighting here is absolutely insane if you talked to me last night i wouldn't have gone and just cheated on you again that is mental anyway op says he wanted to hang out with them and she took them away from me yesterday to go and do activities and then i would do separate activities today however i'm not emotionally able to give the kids the best of me right now and i definitely don't want to be around her now that's fair enough i asked if she could sleep in one of the kids rooms and she got upset and stated that our bed is her bed and she'll sleep where she wants i said obviously i've been for a six mile walk already and i've been calling and leaving voicemails at all the lawyers around i know i can't abandon the home but i can't be around them after what i just saw this morning now thanks to all of you who responded earlier this week suggesting gray rock and a 180 for me i implemented them and i guess it drove her to this also i just looked it up myself because i wasn't sure the gray rock method involves becoming unresponsive to abusive or manipulative behavior so that the perpetrator will lose interest i see op continues i'm officially divorcing her and there's no going back thank you so much to the r slash surviving infidelity crew oh actually op has left a little bit more here saying legal counsel told me to no contact her so that is what i'm doing she texted me last night all about how she hasn't asked for a second chance even though i've given them and she loves me and she now is willing to do therapy and share her locations and access to her phone and she can see herself rocking on the porch with me at 80 yada yada when i got home last night she was in the master so i slept upstairs this morning no communication she wouldn't even look at me yesterday when i caught them with the video i saw his hat and noticed it was a local landscapers so i called to see if he worked there he does okay thanks that was it this mother effer just called me saying if i want to talk to him here's his number don't call my boss i said i've got nothing to say to you he replied saying he had nothing to say to me and hung up okay he sounds just as bad as your wife also her mum reached out saying how i must be devastated and she's so sorry and to call her when i have a chance okay that is a weird 180 i'm going to continue my no contact with everyone and let my lawyer once i secure one do all the talking this is so dang hard well there we go that is the end of that one and to be honest that kind of just got more and more sad as that went along what a horrible woman your wife or ex-wife hopefully soon is i just don't really understand people that that get caught doing this like how do people have the brain where you get caught doing something like this i mean you could say yeah first of all do it and doing it in the first place is awful fine we all know that but then once you're caught by your partner doing this and you're like you you clearly just ruined their life and your family's lives how do they just have no shame at all and if anything sort of like double down and just say well no actually i would have got back with you but you're like you weren't making me happy and that's why i cheated on you and also yeah you didn't really ask for a second chance you were just there like do you even want it also you didn't talk to me last night so that's why i went and had sex with another random man i just don't understand how people <laughs> get to that like conclusion it's weird maybe if you are someone that would cheat in the first place like this for this length of time then you would also be the sort of person to double down and say like you know gaslight your your husband and do all the stuff that your wife did i guess that kind of makes sense but wow comment down below if you're a cheater how do you do it man all right now moving on to our third and final story of this episode i found out why my boyfriend doesn't want to have sex with me this was originally posted just one week ago at the time of recording. I am a 22 year old woman and I started dating my boyfriend who was 25 a year ago. I was a pretty lean person and was very active when I met him. After being together for a while, I decided to take extra precautions and use birth control. Due to stress and the birth control, I gained a significant amount of weight. My boyfriend has been very supportive and we were having a lot of sex. After having a horrible reaction, I decided to take a break from the birth control. That is when I noticed my boyfriend stopped taking the initiative and would only ask for oral. I was already feeling trashy because of how much weight I gained and just him not wanting to have sex hurt me so badly. I decided to have a conversation and see if I could change something. At first, he just said the condoms were just so uncomfortable. My love language has always been physical touch, so I obliged and tried birth control again. Due to having school and work, working out has been extremely hard, so I kept gaining weight and sex was still almost non-existent. 
but he kept telling me it's because he is stressed and just has a lot going on so i was patient and supportive yesterday we decided to play a little game the blunt free trial he would have to be 100 honest with me and i would try my best to not take it personally i asked him what is the thing he really dislikes about me at first he didn't want to say it and i pushed him to tell me which is so stupid of me he then looked at my tummy and said the reason why we haven't had sex often anymore is because of my weight he assured me he still loved me and wants to be with me but that's his preference it broke me because that same day just a couple of hours ago we had sex i just feel horrible and disgusting and i don't know what to do i love him and i saw myself spending my life with him but i can't stop thinking about what he said what should i do i don't know if i should try to work this out our lease ends in may so i have some time to rethink my relationship with him any advice would help now op adds many have asked about how much i have gained i gained 20 pounds and i think most of it distributed to my butt and boobs some still went to my back and tummy 20 pounds is that it it's not even that much my goodness i have some tummy rolls when i sit and some back rolls this weight journey has been so new to me because i always used to be very underweight then COVID happened and I was able to gain some weight. I started working out and I was at the perfect weight and was pretty confident. This year I graduate from college and I've been experimenting a lot with birth control. So my weight and mental health has been impacted. Stress, even when I have been little, has always affected my weight. I'm slowly getting the help I need, but note I'm a college student and recently I've been getting more money to take care of myself. I take accountability that I probably could have a better discipline and not let it get out of hand. Okay, now I actually have a lot of comments on this. This is probably going to be like, not really a rant, but this this is going to be extensive because my thoughts on this are not brief, is all I'll say. First of all, the main point here is that you've, it sounds like, have gained some weight as a result of trying to please your boyfriend, right? The birth controls obviously had a big effect on your weight. And if he is now not attracted to you as much because you're on birth control or have been experimenting with birth controls to please him, then surely he can't just say, oh, you know what? You're just too fat. Surely you're more supportive and just say like, I'm sorry. I know it's like kind of my fault. You were trying to please me, etc. cetera. Let's, let's deal with this. Oh, I'll wear a condom if I have to. Shock, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, not that I know. I'm a little verge. <laughs> Why would I? That's not funny. Imagine if you kept that in the fit. It's Virgil van Dyke. I'm sorry, Jack. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the actual weight gains yourself. You might have noticed there that I said only 20 pounds. Now, look, 20 pounds is a decent chunk. However, I have gained that in the last year right like you know what? we'll put some pictures up on screen i'll get some pictures right now i'll be in the middle here this is my current weight this over here is when i was doing the marathon last year and was pretty skinny i was probably a little bit too skinny i was like 72 73 kg roughly then and you can see the difference in my obviously you can't see my body but you can see the difference in my face shape it's not crazy but there's a bit and then let's go over here this is probably when I was at my heaviest. I don't know what I would have been. Maybe 86, 87, maybe roughly here. This was a bit too chubby, let's be honest. And now I'm like, I think I'm a decent weight. I'm pretty happy with my weight. I don't really care that much. But there's a big fluctuation there in the time I've been doing YouTube. And even from like, you know, one year ago to now, I've gained like, what, 10 kg roughly. I think I'm like 82, maybe a little bit less at the moment. So, you know, changing your weight that much, does it make you look that different to to the extent that someone would therefore not be attracted to you i mean i don't do i look that different to this person here or even this person here no i think and also if you're watching or listening to this sorry on a, on a podcast platform come over to youtube so you can see what i'm what i'm talking about i'll put the link down in the description to the video like is that enough to say oh, actually no i'm not attracted to you anymore 20 pounds surely not if it was 200 pounds yeah fair enough I hold my hands up i'd probably be unattracted as well but given that there's a solid reason for it which your boyfriend has started and the fact that it's not even that much weight anyway and then on top of that the fact that you've been dealing with stress you were underweight before you were you then got to a good weight and you know you, you've had stress related weight issues in the past and it's just not something that you want to really think about at all yeah i just don't really know what he's doing anyway with that being said those are my thoughts let's see what the internet is saying somebody said you wanted honesty and he gave it to you after you pried i don't blame him for his preferences just as i wouldn't blame you for leaving him not really sure what you thought the outcome of a game where you force your partner to tell you something they dislike about you was going to be 
but at least you got your answer? Would you prefer he lied to you? Best of luck moving forward. Godspeed, internet stranger. I think that's a very, very harsh comment personally. Opie replied, I honestly thought the worst thing he was going to say is me snoring or something silly like that. I didn't expect this harsh conversation because it was just a game and he's the one who first initiated it. But yes, I probably shouldn't have asked that if I wasn't ready. Well, fine, but also you wanted to know what the problem was. This has been ongoing for a while. I don't think it's the sort of thing where you could just live with it for the rest of your life, not knowing what the issue was and why your boyfriend didn't want to be intimate with you. So I think now that you know that, it is net a positive thing. Someone else said, I just want to throw out some info. Some women, me included, absolutely need birth control. I tried to get off it after 20 years. I am a 35 year old woman. And after six months of the worst menstrual cycles, me in tears from pain, I went back on it. And within three months, I felt so much better. I have endo and PCOS and the pain from both is crippling and birth control helps 100%. I can't be off of it now. And now I'm concerned the Republicans are coming for my birth control. Condoms do not protect 100%. Birth control doesn't impact health negatively. A small percentage, though, may not want to take it. OP replied, I was an accidental baby because the condom broke. Okay, first of all, why do you know that? Second of all, fair enough. That is one of the main reasons why I'm on it. It has tremendously helped my period. It used to be so painful, irregular, with heavy flow. Now I can comfortably do daily stuff without feeling super bad. Fair enough. That makes sense. Now, here is the top comment. Somebody said, take a step back and think about this. You are putting your health at risk so you can have non-existent sex and long-term body issues. Stop this business. Take care of yourself. Get off birth control. Get your hormones regulated. He can wear a condom. That's it. That's all. You get back to your healthy habits and get your body back. Don't put your health at risk like this. There we go. Finally, a proper comment which I can get behind. And then someone else said, throughout your life, your physical appearance will change. Here we go, exactly. It might be weight, you might lose your hair, you might lose a limb or your breasts. You likely hope to have a long life with a partner who will stick with you through those things. If he was no longer attracted to you due to the side effects of a medication, then his attraction is skin deep. Do with that information what you will. Could not have said it better myself. Exactly, it's not even just about weight. Anything could happen. Any deterioration of your physical attractiveness could happen. And by the way, will obviously with age. If your attraction is skin deep, it's never going to last. And perhaps OP is finding that out right now. Who knows? But a day later, we got this update. Hello, everyone. I was not expecting my last post to blow up. I love my boyfriend. And while many suggested to break up, I thought the best thing before considering breaking up is actually having a conversation. I sat him down and I told him my concerns with his comment, how uncomfortable and damaging it is and how this all started because I started taking birth control. He was very understanding and apologized. He said it was a poor choice of words and that he loves me and will stand by my side no matter what size I am. He helped me create a mutual plan where we both would work out together at home and both get back in shape. After everyone's advice, I scheduled an appointment with my gynecologist to either find a better non-hormonal birth control or get off birth control and instead stick with condoms. He assured me that condoms are more than fine and that we probably should have stuck with them. Thank you so much for everyone's support and kindness. And if anyone is experiencing similar issues, I hope you find the support that I found on Reddit. Okay, a decent ending there. I, I respect this. Now, I've got to say, I'm a little bit doubtful long term, but at least your boyfriend is saying and doing the right things in the short term. I just feel like, you know, the sort of person that would that would actually do the things he did, act the way he did, say the things he did in the first place. You can't just like ignore that going forward. And I think there would be personally trust issues there if you ever did gain weight or didn't lose the weight. And uh, you don't want to be in a sort of kind of stage of your life where you're trying to lose weight for somebody else. I just don't think that's ever healthy. So as long as you're doing it for you, I mean, that's fine. The stuff with the condom and the and you being on birth control makes complete sense, obviously. And I, I like that he admitted that he probably should have stuck with that in the first place. But yeah, overall, I don't know. I feel like, see how it goes. But yeah, I'd be a little bit concerned, although that probably is the pessimist in me. I do think it's good though that you haven't just jumped straight to a, a d definite conclusion as to finish this relationship immediately, because that does seem a little bit too short-sighted. So um, genuinely... OP, best of luck. My husband doesn't know that I know what he's up to. This was originally posted on February 26th of this year. I am a 33 year old woman. My husband is 34. We had our first baby back in June of last year. 
My husband's aunt gifted our son a lovely chunky knitted blanket. The blanket is so soft and I have made multiple comments about how I would like to find a full size blanket just like it because it's so cozy and I'm kind of jealous of my baby. Well, this past weekend, my husband snuck off to the store. He refused to tell me where he was going and why, but I later found a plastic bag with the logo of a local crafting store. That evening, my husband stated that he would like to have an hour of alone time every night after our son goes to sleep. He stressed that he would not like to be disturbed, but if I needed him, then I could call or text him. I agreed to this because we're both adjusting to having very little me time since the birth of our son. Last night during his alone time, our son started crying. I checked the baby monitor and saw that he had simply lost his pacifier and was going back to sleep. However, the baby monitor also shows part of our son's room, not just his crib. In the corner of his room, I saw my husband sitting on the floor with a bunch of chunky yarn in front of him. I turned the volume up and I heard that he was watching a YouTube video on how to finger knit. This sweet man is making me a blanket. He absolutely loves surprising me, but is terrible at keeping secrets. I just know that he is going to slip up and accidentally mention something about the blanket at some point. I plan on acting clueless so that I'll still be surprised when he gives it to me. I just love him so much and I'm so delighted that he's learning a new skill so that I can have a custom blanket. Well, that is the most wholesome post I've ever read. Let's get into some comments. Somebody said, oh my goodness, the title makes this sound like it could have been something else, but it's so cute. Also, why do men seem to always forget about the baby monitor? Yeah, I agree. The title saying my husband doesn't know that I know what he's up to. OP's done that on purpose. Very good. Someone else replied saying because he isn't actually being deceptive. If anything, he's allowed her to know that he isn't up to anything by being in the view of the baby monitor. He's being very transparent about this surprise gift. And I love this for OP. It's something I will steal and do for my partner when we have kids. OP then replied. So he just came home from work and mentioned his alone time again. To keep up the facade, I asked him what he'd be doing during that time. And he said, just working on some stuff. Since he's so terrible at keeping surprises, he always tells me, I have something planned, but I can't tell you what it is. And then we do this back and forth where I ask about it and he refuses to tell me. So for the sake of his surprise to me, I will keep occasionally asking him what he's up to during his alone time. On to another comment. Someone said, Thank you for this lovely post and sweet story that is restoring some of my faith in marriage and humanity today. Please, please, please don't let me come back in several weeks to an update that he used the blanket to pay off a gambling debt, gave it to his best friend's ex for her birthday, or made it into a furry suit for himself. Reddit has been absolutely unhinged the past few months. I completely agree. On the one hand, this is a great post and is super wholesome, but also in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about all the truly awful stories I've read on here and thinking, please don't let it come to something like that. OP replied, if he managed to knit himself a furry suit, I wouldn't even be mad. I'd just be wildly impressed that he had such talent. And finally, before we get into the update, someone commented, what a sweet, lovely partner. Mine can't keep a secret either, and I love giving the validation of surprise and enthusiasm when they present the final piece to me. Just wonderful. OP says, if you ask my husband, he would tell you he's very good at surprising me, but little does he know he's actually very obvious whenever he's planning something. I'm rarely surprised, but I always act like I am. Okay, and then just a couple of weeks ago on March the 13th, we got the update. So again, the brief backstory here. I posted recently, says OP, about how I checked the baby monitor while my son was sleeping, saw my husband sitting on the floor, finger knitting a blanket for me after I made a comment about how I wanted a chunky blanket. My sweet husband broke. He kept on mentioning that he was working on a surprise for me. I would occasionally ask what this mysterious project was and he would get a cheeky smile and say, I can't tell you. That eventually evolved into him repeatedly telling me that keeping the surprise was really hard and he just wanted to tell me. I kept then saying, no, you've kept it a surprise for this long. You can keep going. But one day after dinner, he decided that he couldn't keep it in anymore. He showed it to me. It was only about a quarter done, but it was lovely. The arm was really soft and was my favorite color. I could tell that he'd taken his time because of the consistency of all the loops, even unfinished, It was perfect. He told me that he kept moving it around to different hiding spots, but that since our house is very small, it was only a matter of time before I accidentally found it. He said he'd run out of yarn and asked if I wanted to pick out another color to add to it. 
I said yes, and we made a little date out of it. We grabbed lunch and then walked around the craft store before I picked out a complimentary color to the one he chose. He hasn't had much time to work on it the last few days, but he assured me it will be finished by my birthday. I'll post a picture of the blanket when finished. For now, I am wildly impressed with how long he kept it a secret, and I'm so excited to have my first ever handmade blanket. Okay, so there we go. Let's end with a couple of top comments. Someone said, oh my gosh, I was ready for another unhappy story, but this is the sweetest thing I've read on this sub. What a sweet, sweet man. Someone else said, as a crocheter, if he does not finish before your birthday, whether that is next week or in five months, tell him that's totally normal. It's like a rite of crochet passage that gifts are not delivered on or before the intended event. We also need photos photos so there we have it without a doubt one of the most wholesome posts of all time even towards the end of that i was still thinking back in my mind please can this not go wrong i mean it's on r slash best of redditor updates and most of the time the updates aren't good but thankfully we got away with one there that was just great from start to finish i will say as well on behalf of your husband op that the, the surprise was still a thing because you know finding out what you were doing on the baby monitor was the surprise in and of itself and the fact is it would have taken ages to finish and it would have been a while until you had the present eventually now you have the excitement of knowing what he's doing knowing that he's still spending loads of time on a present for you but then you can also get involved and you know as you said go and pick up some colors make it perfect for yourself and um yeah it's just a great thing to kind of now do together i guess even though he's still doing it but you know what's going on now that is going to do it for the first story of this episode but um there is time for another one and i'm gonna be honest that was a bit too wholesome time to bring things back to reality i'm your wife not your mum my 32 year old wife always says this to me a 34 year old man and i don't know how to respond how can i make her see my side this was originally posted on february 26th 2024 that's right the same day of the first post hey everyone so my wife and i have been together for 18 years but have been arguing recently about the responsibilities within our marriage and we can't seem to agree i work full-time and my wife is a stay-at-home mother we have two children one is in school full-time and the other goes to preschool two and a half days a week recently my wife has been sending me the stupid tiktoks that always say your wife is your partner not your mum." And essentially boils down to men should help out around the house help with the kids and pick up after themselves a sentiment that i generally agree with this usually comes with a side of you don't value what i do look after the kids and plan everything etc now to be clear i'm not against helping out around the house and helping get the kids to bed and brush their teeth and cook meals i help with this stuff every day i feel like all i do though is work because the second I finish my actual work, I have kids to help with because she's had them all day. My position is that she is right when she says that kids are work and I can appreciate that after a day of being with them all day, she is probably tired of them. But I've also been at work all day too and it isn't fair to expect me to be the sole parent as soon as I'm finished. Then there is the issue of housework. Our house is always a mess, which frustrates me when she complains about having to do all the unpaid labor of managing a household and looking after the kids. From my perspective, I go to work in a messy house and I finish work in a messy house. I work from home. I go into my office for eight hours, only coming out for the occasional coffee and snack. This means that 90% of my mess is contained to a room only I go in. Most days while I'm at work, she isn't even home. I feel that I am holding up my end of the bargain by working full time and then helping with housework and the kids outside of that. But she isn't holding up her end of it by looking after the house and kids while I'm at work. I could understand that she wouldn't get as much done around the house on days when our youngest is home. But on days where she is at preschool, she takes it as an opportunity to have a break and go shopping with her mum or go and visit a friend. Whenever I bring this up or question how much effort she is putting in, I get, you don't appreciate me and I'm not your mother. I'm not saying she should be waiting on me hand and foot as my personal maid, cook and sex doll, not that we ever have sex, because I'm the man bringing home the bacon and I really hope I don't come across that way in this post as that really is not what I'm saying but I'm killing myself trying to do everything, yet I'm being told that I'm the problem for treating her like my mother because I'm expecting her to do her part. What can I do to help her see my side? Okay, interesting start to this one. And of course, as always, there is an update to come. I would have to say though, off the bat, that 
this is all caveated with with the fact that we're only getting obviously the husband side op side of the story and i think we would need to hear from from his wife as well so we can balance out the two viewpoints i think that the, the easy way to solve this or just to understand who is doing more and who should be doing more is perhaps just do it on like general effort level and time spent doing things for your husband for op there's no way that he has the time to go shopping with his mum or do other you know, leisure activities that he'd want to do by the sounds of it. So if his wife is able to do those things, I would argue that that is not fair. I mean, doing that in the middle of the day. If you're both putting in the same amount of effort, forget money because you have your agreement on, on who is actually making money for the house. The unpaid labor bit is a bit weird because again, obviously it's unpaid. That's what the agreement you have is. Then I think as long as you guys are putting in the same amount of effort, then that should be fine. But it sounds to me like you're not, which isn't fine. I also don't think that OP is coming across as saying that oh, because I make the money, I don't have to do housework or look after the kids. I don't actually think for one second he's saying that. Um, he's just saying that he doesn't want to come home and then do all the work of the house after work, which would normally be, you know, for both partners, because your wife's been with them the entire day, the kids that is, and doing housework. Realistically, if you both went off to work, then both came back, you'd both have to split that, that housework and look after the kids anyway. So her being at home in the day and doing that stuff doesn't take away from the fact that she still needs to do it in the evenings when you're available as well even though i kind of get her point that she's been doing it all day i don't know it's a tough one get your comments in down below but let's get into the update and see what happened okay so on the same post this was the update titled yes i help so a lot of people are saying we need to sit down and try to look at things as a team and i'm totally on board for this approach and i'll let you know how that goes also to a few people who dislike my framing of helping saying it's my responsibility also yes i agree and I use the term helping as that's the word that she uses when saying I need to do more to help around the house. Another lot of you either can't read or are refusing to believe that I actually parent my own children. I wake them up in the morning. I make them breakfast every day. I get them dressed every day. I take them to school two to three days a week. I know their teachers. I know all their friends and their friends' parents' names. I know their doctors. I know their allergies. None, thankfully. I bath them. I get their PJs on. I read them the same goddamn bedtime story every night for weeks because they don't want any of the other books we have. They want George the Giant. I draw with them. I play games with them. I know their favorite Disney princesses and favorite superheroes. As for the household, I do laundry. I load the dishwasher. I cook my own lunches. I tidy up after myself. I iron. I fold. I put away laundry. I pick up their toys and I tidy their playroom. I hoover at the weekend. I take them to kids parties. I also do all the chores that my wife won't because... I'm the man, like taking out the bins, cleaning the car, mowing the grass, fixing anything that breaks. Okay, interesting stuff there from OP. To be honest, it sounds like he is doing a lot. Now, there is actually another update, again posted a few days later after the talk. So, I arranged for the in-laws to have the kids Friday night. Me and the wife sat down and had a talk. A long talk. Probably one of the deepest and hardest talks we've ever had in our 18 years. I told her my side, that I felt overwhelmed and underappreciated, that I felt I was doing more than my fair share and that she wasn't. I told her that I could understand that while I may be doing plenty around the house and parenting, that I was guilty of letting her take the majority of the mental load, but that still didn't excuse her behavior. I felt I was firm but fair, and to her credit, instead of fighting back, she listened. We discussed her feelings and she admits to not prioritizing housework and trying to make the most of her free time and agreed that we will sit down and come up with a schedule for cleaning that we are both accountable for. She told me some issues that I wasn't aware of that her mother had been dealing with since retiring and the passing of her father, my wife's granddad. Loneliness and depression, issues relating to my sister-in-law, She's a mess and constant headache, which was why she'd been going to see her so much. Other feelings she'd been having about feeling lost in kids, not having anything for herself, and some depression related to weight gain since having our second child. She's put on about 40 to 50 pounds and no longer feels attractive. I told her that I still think she's beautiful, but she doesn't, hence our dead bedroom. There were hurt feelings and tears from both of us. So, we're taking steps to help. One, we both agree to switch out mornings and evenings. I get the kids up, breakfast, teeth, dress, and take them to school. She does dinner, bath, bed, etc. The next day, we switch. This gives us both some mornings and evenings free to do what we want. Two, we're both joining the gym. I too have put on some weights and lost muscle since our second child. 
Hopefully this helps with her body confidence. Three, we're also arranging with the in-laws to have babysitters once a week for us to start going on regular dates again. For context, the in-laws are our only support. I'm an orphan of abusive parents, raised by my grandmother, now past. Four, we've found a cleaning schedule where you do certain chores throughout the house every day, but pick one room to deep clean every day too. With me doing laundry, dishwasher, etc., things that take less time, her doing the deep cleans and general tidying. And five, most importantly, she is looking to get a job part-time so she can start helping financially, give her some income that isn't from me, and give her something to focus on outside of being a mum. As all my wages went into the joint account, I felt like I never had any money, as I didn't want to spend and there not be enough to pay the mortgage, etc., so I never spent money and I resented that she did. So when she gets a job, both incomes are going into the joint account. Then we're getting a budget together, making sure there is enough to cover direct debits, then dividing the remaining into accounts for savings and personal accounts for each of us to have our own money that we can spend how we want guilt free. And six, I'm going to pick up a hobby that gets me out of the house and commute to the office once a week. One thing we discussed was that I was always at home. I didn't do anything other than work and be at home. So we didn't have a lot to talk about because I didn't go anywhere. It also meant that she never got any alone time at home away from me and the kids. And she felt like a nuisance being at home while I'm at work. That actually makes a lot of sense. We took this weekend to spend some time together as a family. We took the kids to the park, went to a nature reserve for a picnic and bike rides, took the kids rock climbing, followed by ice cream. It was really nice. And we both feel like a weight has been lifted. It's obviously not going to change overnight and we need to work at it, but we have a plan and both seem to want to put in the effort. To everyone who gave me good advice, recommended therapy, we can't afford it until she starts work, but we're looking for when she does, commiserated with your own stories or just had a kind word to say, thank you so much. There were comments that made me cry and so much insight that I hadn't considered. Thank you. To those of you who clearly didn't read my post, but instead assumed I was entitled and entirely to blame because I used the word help, or that I probably didn't know my own children's birthdays and allergies, I feel sorry for you. And I hope that you get the help that you so sorely need. My wife wants to disown our son for cheating on his girlfriend. Who is wrong? How about that for a title, my word. This was originally posted just a few days ago on the 6th of March. Our son is in college and he has a long-term girlfriend and he cheated on her with his ex-girlfriend. My wife warned him to come clean and tell his girlfriend. My son was being selfish and he didn't. When a month went by and nothing, my wife dropped the bomb. Girlfriend devastated. But I think her and my son are still talking as they still hang around each other like his cheating never happened. My wife is upset that our son would do this. Don't get me wrong, so am I. I just don't like to interfere in my kid's romantic drama. He's an adult. My wife, though, wants to cut all contact with him because she thinks he's the equivalent to Hitler because of his cheating, which I definitely don't agree with her on. And I know my wife will deeply regret doing this to her son when our son is going to be talking to his whole family but just ignoring his mum. Now, I've got to say, that is the end of the original post and, and that seems a little bit of a leap. Let's get into comments because someone said exactly what I'm thinking. What he did was wrong, but cutting off contact is overkill. Yeah, I mean, surely there's a middle ground here where you, you punish your child in some way or at least, you know, sit them down, have, have a chat with them and say what you did is disgraceful. But to cut contact, that seems a little bit too much. Somebody else delves a little bit deeper saying to OP, I'm suspecting that your wife has a more personal issue with cheating and lying about it. Either she was a victim of it, a close friend or family member was, or she did it and regrets it. Your son is the embodiment of what personally happened to her and is a constant reminder of it. Yeah, that could be the case. It also could just be that she just despises cheating. But again, I don't think that that warrants going as far as she is saying she's going to go. A more on the nose interpretation, someone else adds, is that mum has found a way to make this about her. She sees his behavior as a reflection on her parenting skills and is desperately trying to save the situation. It can be a difficult day for some parents when they realize their kids have already more or less become who they are going to be in terms of a moral compass. Yeah, maybe. I think I'd probably disagree with that. I think it's not about her. I don't think it seems that she's thinking it's about her and her lack of parenting skills that she's failed as a mother or whatever to, to give her son a, a proper moral compass. 
I think it's more that she's just incredibly disappointed and she's probably just exaggerating a bit. And then finally, someone said, it sounds like your wife was hurt deeply by someone who cheated. Maybe she needs to sit the son down and tell him her story to let him understand why she feels so strongly against him. Right, let's get straight into the update, guys, because this is where things get absolutely mental. I don't want to waste any of your guys' time. I do just want to say, though, if you have made it this far into the episode, this is your reward, okay? Congratulations, because what you're about to hear is going to blow your mind. Everyone wanted an update from the first post I made. My son was dismissive because he was hiding the fact that he got both girls pregnant. It turns out the girlfriend was still in contact with him because of the pregnancy. The other girl is getting an abortion. The girlfriend forgave my son for cheating. The girlfriend and my son are back together and are keeping the baby. My wife is fuming. She blocked my son on everything and she's done with him completely. She says she doesn't care if I talk to him or not, but she doesn't want to be involved in his life anymore. And he's basically dead to her. Wow. Um, let's get some comments down below if you expected that. I certainly didn't. <laughs> wow. What a culmination of that story. I told you it was a short one, but my goodness, was it? Well, I want to say sweet, but I don't know if that's really sweet more just outrageous maybe the mum, to be fair is just so sick of her own son that she doesn't care anymore it sounds to me like this isn't the first time something like this has happened if you're the sort of guy that can get your ex-girlfriend pregnant and then the girl you're seeing pregnant at the same time then you're probably just a not, not nice of guys anyway probably and maybe to be fair op your wife is just like i can't be dealing with this kid anymore i don't want him in my life simple as that she's tried as much as possible I imagine that, that what we're seeing here is it's just one of a series of events throughout his life, I presume, that have been pretty bad. Don't know, obviously presuming there, but that seems the most logical conclusion. Goodness me. I mean, please, somebody, tell this kid how to use a condom. I, a 27-year-old woman, have been accused of baby trapping my 28-year-old male fiancé, despite the fact that my tubes are tied. This was originally posted on March the 1st, 2024. I had an argument with my fiancé this morning. We've been dating for two years, engaged since September, and for the most part, everything has been going well. We've been planning a quiet backyard ceremony so that we can save up for a house instead. We've been communicative and managed to get through fights in the past, but this takes the cake. He's been evasive for the past two weeks about the wedding or any future plans we've made, and I basically had to corner him this morning before leaving for work to ask him what's going on. Turns out, while he was dog sitting for his uncle in early February, they had a chat that stuck with him. When they were talking about life and how things have been, his uncle admitted he resented his ex-wife for baby trapping him. And now he's divorced while his ex-wife is dating again. And my fiance's cousin is an entitled jerk who terrorized him when they were both teenagers. Turns out it's been sitting in his mind. He says that he thinks I'm about to spring a pregnancy announcement on him and trap him into the marriage. This is despite the fact that he knows that I don't want kids. I basically raised my siblings and lost out on my childhood. I told him about not wanting kids when we first started dating. We were both on the same page and I've asked him about getting a vasectomy in the past, which is why it's surprising that he thinks that I'm trying to baby trap him. The thing is, the first chance I got, which still took a long time, I got my tubes tied. I literally can't get pregnant. I reminded him of this fact and that made him go really quiet. He didn't even apologize or say anything. So I told him that if he's going to be like this over a made up issue in his head, I don't know how much I trust him in a real crisis. Now I'm wondering if I was too harsh and what steps we can take to move forward or if I'm the right amount of angry and I should just end it. I've got no idea what to do right now. Now let's get straight into some comments. Somebody down below said, is this the only time he's pulled something like this? Or does he have a history of being easily influenced by people he maybe shouldn't be taking advice from especially when that advice isn't even applicable to his situation. I agree with that. Why is he suddenly hearing someone else's story and then thinking that directly applies to him when it doesn't even relate at all? OP replied, he sometimes gets influenced by things he sees online. It's why we avoid using apps like Facebook, but he rarely takes advice from his family, especially the uncle, since they weren't that close before his divorce. Someone else said, he says that he thinks I'm about to spring a pregnancy announcement on him and trap him in the marriage. I'm confused. You stated that this man intends on marrying you, right? You're engaged. 
Baby trapping is when someone intentionally gets pregnant using methods like deception to keep their partner from leaving the relationship. Does he actually intend on marrying you? You literally can't get pregnant. You remind him of this fact. That made him go really quiet. He didn't even apologize or say anything. I would demand a response from him. His words and behavior are a red flag. I would postpone the wedding until the relationship is in a better place. Maybe this needs to be addressed with a counselor. OP replies to that saying, the only reason I didn't drag a response from him is that I would have been late for work and I have a meeting I couldn't miss. But if he doesn't have a response when I get home, I'm definitely gonna call off the wedding, if not the relationship. Someone else says, his uncle sounds like a real winner, misogyny at its finest. Why is he afraid of getting trapped into marriage when he's literally planning a wedding with you? Like what? Marriage also isn't a trap. Anyone can leave at any time, regardless of whether there's kids. And the fact that he forgot your shoes were tied, is he dumb? You sound the right amount of angry to me. Personally, I'd be hesitant to marry someone who was so easily swayed by his sexist uncle that you're somehow trying to trick him into a life of misery. On top of that, he's been dwelling on this for two weeks and never once communicated what was going on with him. He just completely checked out until you forced it out of him. I'm not sure you'd want to marry anyone who A, thinks marriage is a trap for men and B, let his uncle convince him you're just like his ex-wife in one conversation. Oh, and also C, can't communicate or apologize. D, surrounds himself with such trashy male role models. And E, doesn't understand how tied tubes work. Wow, that is conclusive. OP says, I think this is exactly my problem. I don't know if he thinks I deliberately ruined my life to just mess his up or I've been lying since I met him. I don't want to make a knee-jerk decision, but I'm seriously reconsidering this relationship. And then finally, somebody asked, based on how you've described him in some other comments, is he mentally challenged in some way or what's the deal? Oh, goodness me. I mean, I don't know whether to laugh or not at that comment, but I kind of understand where this person is getting from. It, it does feel like this guy might have some sort of mental difficulties i'm not even saying that in a, you know in a in a facetious way it just genuinely does his logic makes no sense like he has no self-awareness or just kind of any idea what is going on in the world around him or how people should react or just be yeah very weird op said no he doesn't he's a smart guy but he's weak when it comes to social influence at best he is impressionable at worst he can be somewhat spineless I thought that he'd improved a lot over the past couple of years, but I guess I was wrong. Well, I thought this guy was going to be dumb when I first read the title of this one, but uh, <laughs> you've exceeded my expectations, friend. Congratulations to you. I just don't understand, as some of the comments said there, how you can be so easily led by someone in a situation that has got nothing to do with you at all and is completely different. And also, surely you think to yourself, logically, first of all, yes, Getting married to somebody does not infer baby trapping at all. I mean, it's the opposite of that. It doesn't, it's got nothing to do with, with your relationship in terms of if you're married, if you're engaged, if you're just with each other. It li literally doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference. And secondly, oh, it, she actually can't get pregnant because she's had an operation. I mean, come on. Now, the good news is, guys, that seven days later, we got the following update, which is very, very juicy. It's been an exhausting week, both at home and at work. Basically, we're not engaged anymore. He is moving back to his parents and our relationship is over while he works on himself. Wow. He wasn't cheating, nor was there a secret baby on the side. Half a yes to him having second thoughts, half yes to him being influenced by family and friends. Now, I won't go much into the details, just that his uncle's family were always awful to him. They were always the go-to babysitters and he has trouble standing up to that generation of his family. He's impressionable and he has trouble separating fact from fiction because of that and because of them. Another factor is that one of his formerly child-free friends announced his wife's pregnancy during New Year's and he's been excited about it. My ex-fiance is wondering if he changed his mind, especially since his parents do want to have grandchildren and have been asking if we're going to wait before having them. But after dog sitting for his uncle, apparently all that combined in his mind that I changed my mind and I'd surprised him about it. Now this is the core of the matter for me. Whether he forgot I had my tubes tied doesn't really matter. He was projecting his fears, anxiety and trauma onto me and punishing me for something that I didn't even do or say and then made me out to be a deceptive partner because of that projection. He stopped trusting me because he was afraid of what the warped version he built up in his mind might do. That wasn't okay. And that is why I ended it. He's been moving his stuff out all week and he told me he's going back into therapy. 
His parents will be there to help him and they separately apologize to me. They had no idea how bad his anxiety is. I'll be there to support him as a friend and I've been trying to say that it's on pause, but typing this out also makes me realize that no matter what, I wouldn't be able to win against those fears, nor can I trust him to ever really fully trust me against them, assuming he ever did. Thank you for your input, guys. Some of the thoughts did help me steer the conversation, but ultimately it still boiled down to a broken trust and I don't think we're coming back from that. Now that is it for this post. Somebody said in the comments down below, actually, I'd go even further. I just cut all contact with him once he's moved out. Don't stay on as his friend. That never works. He needs to deal with his issues on his own and you deserve to be able to heal from this relationship and move on with your life. Opie replied, yeah, I don't think I'll stay friends for long with him, but a lot of our circles overlap and I don't want to lose friends over this yet. Yeah, probably a good idea. As long as you can maintain your personal friendships, obviously that is going to be tough if your ex is in the same sort of circles, but I don't know. Maybe it is best short term to be a little careful. But yeah, long term, definitely cut all contact. And then finally, this was the top comment down below. Someone said, I'm so sorry you're going through this, but you now need to put yourself first. You can't support him anymore. Let his family do that. It would be best for you to cut all ties. I wish you the best in your future endeavors. Yeah, I guess all I'm saying is that you, you shouldn't you know, like jeopardize your own friendships and, and let him you know, maintain his friendships, which I guess are also yours or you share a lot of the same friends just because of you know a rash decision that you make when in reality yeah you could probably chill out for a couple of months and then do what you need to do but yeah i think overall this guy has just proved he's an idiot and you're right it's not about the fact that he may or may not have forgotten about your operation it's more just he just clearly doesn't trust you he's so easily influenced by others that have stupid opinions anyway well, not necessarily stupid, but again, just not at all relevant to him. And it seems like he can just change his mind so quickly in a matter of seconds that you could never really trust him. You know, if he said one thing, how could you ever think he's going to stick by that when you know how quickly things can change with him? So yeah, I think I think for your own sake, probably worth getting out of it. And uh, I think you made the right decision. Am I the jerk for breaking up my engagement because my fiance isn't traditional enough? This was originally posted on the 3rd of March, 2024, just two weeks ago at the time of recording. A little background. I am a 26 year old woman and I come from a relatively traditional Asian family. So sorry in advance for the bad English. My father owns a rice wine brewery and my mother helps him with it. Even though I said my family is pretty much conservative, from what I've seen growing up, my father never told my mother to do all the chores and he helps her with them. My father always says that he couldn't provide for the family alone and she has to work. That's why he never expects her to do everything in the house. Just like how they share the responsibilities to earn for our family, they also share responsibilities taking care of the household. Now, enter my fiance, a 29-year-old man. We met on social media. He is an American who is currently working in my country. We've been dating for three years and have been engaged for five months. He always tells me he's looking for a traditional woman and wants to date with marriage in mind. He said that women who are able to take care of a household and a child rearing are admirable. And I always agreed with him without much thought because that is indeed an incredible feat, right? Well, he's working in a small university and I'm currently working in hospital. We saved enough to buy a house with a little bit of help from my parents, but we haven't moved in together yet because, you know, Asian parents. But anyway... On my father's birthday last week, we talked about marriage once again. He doesn't think his income alone would be enough after our marriage, and it's giving him insecurities. So I suggested that I keep working after marriage, and that's not a problem because we'd be partners. My father also offered that we take over his brewery. And while I found the idea lovely, my fiance on the other hand seemed hesitant about it, but he agreed that I should keep my job. That was when the first problem started. I told him that since I have to work, then I expect he'll help with the household chores later. After I said that, he suddenly got irritated. He said that he'd been telling me he's looking for a traditional woman and that now he'd been catfished since I don't want to take care of every house chore because I'd still work anyway. Yeah, major red flags instantly. Whenever he said he's looking for a traditional spouse, I always thought that he'd also be a traditional spouse aka being sole provider so i can focus on taking care of the house and child if we ever have any but when i told him that he said i'm a gold digger and materialistic like any other woman even when i never once asked him to be a sole provider he brought that up first mind you i didn't even let him spend alone whenever we go out on a date 
For example, if he paid for dinner, I paid for coffee in the movie. Even my father willingly offered his brewery if we want to take care of it as a means to provide for ourselves. So where's the gold I should have been digging here? That was when I actually put the ring down and I told him that I want to break up. I told him he's not traditional enough if he wants a fully traditional wife. I didn't want to deal with someone who could easily call me a gold digger because I want to share the chores. That hasn't even happened yet in front of my parents. I can't help but think that if he could easily say what he said in front of my parents when we haven't even married yet, then he could say something a lot worse when we're married and alone. I went home alone and he texted me saying he was sorry and didn't mean what he said. He asked me to meet, but I don't feel like it. However, when I told my friends, most of them told me I was a bit too emotional, hasty and impulsive, that I might look like a jerk because I don't even want to meet him. His mother is now trying to talk me out of it and saying that I'm too old to act like this and it's the culture barrier that's led us to this point. So here I am trying to look for a new perspective am i in the wrong right before i get into my thoughts on this first of all let's have a look at some relevant comments someone below this asks what did your parents think op replies my parents don't really speak english so they can only understand bits and pieces of what was said my father initially felt bad he thought we fought because he brought up the business but after i told them the actual reason excluding the gold digger and materialistic remarks they are fully on my side and if i want to end it then i should they say but they think that I should at least meet him once to end our relationship properly. Someone else said, be careful when you break up with him and bring someone along. All right, thanks for your advice. My parents are coming and my father said he's not going to let me meet him alone. Thank you once again. All right, from my perspective, there's no way on earth that OP can even be close to being the jerk here, right? It's just ridiculous to be honest it's barely even worth me commenting on the comments summed it up well and your fiance is clearly just a walking red flag as i mentioned during reading that i mean what is he even doing he wants a traditional partner but he's not willing to pull his side of the deal also what tradition even is this anymore i don't even know it's a bit of a weird dynamic but you know what if that's what he wants and he's not willing to do his half of it then he obviously doesn't deserve it now good news we have an update nine days later on march the 12th we got this First of all, I want to thank everyone who kindly replied and messaged me over the past week. I'm truly grateful for all the encouragement that I received. It really warms my heart in the midst of all of this mess. I want to admit that I too ignored quite a number of red flags that he displayed in the past few years, brushing them off as differences in our culture and upbringing. I thought I was being open-minded and accommodating, not knowing that I should have opened a deeper conversation regarding what I wanted to if I was to deepen our relationship. Many people kindly gave me praise in my previous post, but I actually feel rather undeserving to receive that because I also did so many stupid things that got me here. Okay, so now onto the real update. Last night, I had dinner with him alongside my father after much thought and input I received from Redditors, friends and family. Long story short, he still didn't want to end our relationship. He actually apologized, saying he misspoke and wanted to fix his mistake. He said it was because he was too comfortable with me since I'm not a confrontational person. And I did help quite a lot with his chores, bringing side dishes, helping clean up his plates every now and then, etc. So he thought that I'll always be accommodating to what he wants. I also apologize, saying that I've never really brought this kind of topic up seriously. And I've never made sure we're on the same page whenever we did discuss this type of topic. He agreed that I should have told him before because that way it would never have got to this point. And then he kept bringing up my bad communication. I know it's my fault too, but it didn't feel good at all hearing that from him. Yeah, I mean, that's the definition of gaslighting there. You've like semi-apologized even though you didn't need to. And he has just jumped on that. He is taking that and he's using every last inch. Even if he'd admitted his faults and never spoke badly to me before, except for that one time, I still can't shake off my distrust of him. I don't know why, but what happened last week is like an instant feeling of repulsion so i returned the ring he gave and i told him i'll return more than half of the amount that we used to buy our house he initially refused the money saying he wants to keep trying to win back my trust and me to keep in contact with him but this morning he said i can transfer it because marriage is not really happening now and he tried to prevent me from selling the house and also isn't telling our mutual friends that marriage is off the table so i've just updated almost all of my group chats that now i'm single and i'm here to tell everyone i'm single because my now ex-fiance has a red flag that is so big 
China would be crying with envy. I feel like a jerk to be honest because it seems like my feelings for him were that shallow all along but maybe reality hasn't hit me yet but that's that okay that is the end of the post let's jump into some comments somebody said you absolutely did the right thing what does your dad think and i personally couldn't agree more my dad is a typical japanese father so we don't talk a lot since i've grown up but he's supporting my decision to cancel the engagement he doesn't say much but he actually looks quite happy since he hasn't been into it for quite a while now thank you for the kind words i hope you and everyone around you is always kind like you are to me now it certainly makes me feel better now someone else was a little bit more scathing now let me know in the comments if you agree with this but they said you need to go to intense therapy so it doesn't happen again you apologize to a man for not being his maid objectively yeah i guess op kind of did but i think this is a little bit too harsh op replied thank you for the response I didn't apologize for not wanting to be someone's maid, but for not being open and talking about what I want and expect in our relationship. I read in the comments of my previous post that many people pointed out that the conversation with this topic should have happened long before, and I do agree with that, and that is why I apologize. However, I will also keep working on myself, so thank you for your suggestion. I'll keep it in mind. Wow, what a polite way to to kind of repel that question. Someone said you need to go to intense therapy so it doesn't happen again and op just says yeah i'm not gonna do that but thanks for your suggestion so what happened to the house someone asked did you go 50 50 why does he get more we went 45 45 and my father added the extra 10 percent my father was the one who offered to give him 50 percent of the shares as an extra layer of protection now he can't complain and has no reason to contact me or my family to catch a sea bream with shrimp, he said. Okay, so that is the first post done of this episode. Well, I say done because before we move on to the second story, I do just want to mention and bring up a couple of other comments that I've seen in the comments down below that I think are very, very interesting. Maybe along the lines perhaps of what a few of you guys might be thinking as well. A little bit like the other comment we saw where people are saying that OP was just way too naive and actually it was her fault that she landed herself in this situation. And she could have just dealt with this and and brought it up a lot longer ago than than she actually did. So someone in the comments down below actually called OP and her family spineless. But OP said this, If you don't mind, I don't have a problem with you insulting me, but do not attempt to do that to my family. Not everything can be resolved by only being tough and formidable. I don't think it's stupid knowing when to be firm and then how we compromise for our final decision to avoid future problems. But I do think it's naive when one doesn't even consider that there are other ways to solve a problem other than butting heads and fighting. Stupid when they don't even try to understand the logic behind others' problem-solving method. Yeah, very fair, and I agree. She also continued to another similar scathing response, saying that that is your prerogative right to insult us, but it's also within my prerogative right to ask you to stop. This kind of exchange is called conversation in Japan. I don't know what it's called in your country. Is that another cultural difference? If someone's uncomfortable, they should suck it up or don't go and talk in the first place? Excellent. My apologies for being so ignorant. Giving him more money than he deserved guaranteed me an excuse for cutting contact completely. I've compromised my decision. Social circles run differently here because breaking up an engagement or a divorce will always be a hot topic. And sometimes it affects you on an institutional level. Sometimes it'll affect your career even more when you're a woman. Yes, there are some cases where people get fired because they got divorced because it will reflect badly on the company's image. Wow, I remember guys, this is happening in Japan as OP just revealed. Sometimes some companies go as far as giving paid leave and vacation to mend their employees' married life. I'm not breaking up, I'm cancelling an engagement. It weighs differently. You are naive to think that every society works like yours and your value is applicable to every part of the world without considering their societal circumstances. I'm not excusing you, but I'm not someone so important that I can change them overnight, nor do I want to sacrifice my family and my own reputation. I'm not delusional enough to think I'm the main character. If that's still spineless to you, then sure. I hope you'd do as well as him navigating your life here. Well, damn, uh, OP just ate, that's for sure. <laughs> wow, what a way to just destroy a hater on Reddit. 
fair play. I need to take a leaf out of her book. That was emphatic. I mean, it's obvious, but she is completely right. It is a societal difference. You know, she mentioned throughout it's it's a different country where this is happening and you can tell, but I don't think she wanted to actually reveal that it was in Japan, but she did reveal it was Japan in, in the comments down below. And I think we all know how, how society and culture is completely different in Japan than in the Western world. I mean, who knows? Maybe one of you watching right now is from Japan or at least is living in Japan. Let us know in the comments down below how is life different, especially in regards to relationships, because yeah, the context provided by OP there gives a lot more reasoning and, and makes me think or makes me understand, I guess, how she acted a lot more than if this had happened in the Western world, I think. Even still, I think she acted fine the whole time, to be fair. And yeah, she's absolutely right. Is it really necessary to just fight and have a massive argument and potentially cause yourself years of like emotional turmoil? Or can you just sacrifice a little bit of money in the short term and then just be done with a relationship that you don't want to be in? That is obviously the better option. So yes, get your comments in down below. But uh, that is going to do it for the first story. However, before we move on to story two in this video, I've got a little announcement for you. Well, I say announcement. I mentioned it in yesterday's episode, but I want to keep it on the down low. I don't want a lot of people knowing. I only want you, the core fan, the core watcher and listener of my channel the one that is still listening and watching right now despite the fact that we're what you know over 10 minutes into this episode to hear this if you are a fan of relationship stories and drama just like the one i've just read and the one i'm about to read then you might be interested in my brand new channel redditor extra where i cover purely reddit relationship drama stories obviously this right here is my main channel and it's not going to change but i can't cover exclusively relationship stories every single day on this despite the fact that at the moment i kind of want to i'm really enjoying them so for that reason to be able to do that i've started a brand new channel redditor extra where i'm going to do that hopefully every single day i've already posted two videos over there and by the time you're watching this the channel may well have over a thousand subscribers you guys are loving it so thank you very much for the support if you want to check it out it will be on the end screen of this one and also linked sneakily in the description, but nowhere else. So don't go telling people about this. I only want this to be for the core viewers, you listening to this right now. All right, let's get into story two and don't tell anyone I said that. Am I the jerk for being truthful and admitting that I find my wife unattractive after her surgery? This was originally posted on the 9th of March, 2024. My wife had plastic surgery recently. We discussed it and I was against it. It wasn't my decision and ultimately though i had no say she looks weird now she had the fat sucked out of her face lip fillers a neck lift other stuff i don't really get she gives me uncanny valley vibes now it freaks me out she's fully healed now and she wants us to go back to normal like me initiating sex i have done so but not as much as i used to and when I do, I try and make sure there's very little light. It's been a few months and I kind of dread having to look at her. Obviously, she's noticed. She's been bugging me to tell her what's up. I've tried telling her I'm just tired from work or that I'm run down. Really anything except for the truth. She broke down and asked me if I was having an affair. I said that I wasn't. She asked to look at my phone. I unlocked it for her and handed it over. I wasn't worried about her finding anything because there's nothing to find. She spent an hour looking through it and found nothing. She asked me to explain why I changed. I tried explaining that I just wasn't that interested right now. Nothing I said was good enough for her. So she kept digging. I finally told her the truth. I wasn't harsh or brutally honest. I just told her that her new face wasn't something I found attractive and that I was turned off. She asked if that's why I turn off all the lights now. And I said yes. She started crying and said that she needed time alone. She went to stay with her sister. I've been called every name in the book since this happened. Her sister said I'm a piece of trash for insulting my wife's looks. Her friends all think I'm the jerk. I tried not to say anything. I can't force myself to find her attractive. I still love her, but her face is just weird now. She looks like the blue alien from the fifth element. Now, I have no idea what the blue alien from the fifth element is. So here's a picture. Oh my gosh. I mean, this is one of those times where if you are listening to this on a podcast platform, you should probably head over to YouTube or to be fair, just look up Blue Alien from Fifth Element yourself. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't really want that as a wife, but I do kind of get where OP is probably coming from. Right, let's get into some comments. OP has actually added that she isn't hideous. She just doesn't look like herself anymore. 
Remember when the girl from Dirty Dancing got a nose job and no one recognized her? Someone asked her, do you love her because of her looks or who she is? And OP says that love and sexual attraction are two different things. I do think that is completely fair, to be honest. You can still love someone, but be less sexually attracted to them after they do this to themselves. I kind of get it. Someone else commented, how was getting these surgeries discussed? And what did she say when you protested? She said she wanted to get this stuff done. I said I'd prefer it if she didn't. I pulled up pictures of celebrities before and after and showed her how weird they look. Meg Ryan, the girl from Glee, the girl from Lip Sync Battle, she said that she'd feel better about herself if she got it. We talked and argued about it for a year before she did it, started with lip fillers and ended with buckle fat removal. Someone else responded saying, you're shallow. But OP said, if I get a snake tattoo across my face, is she allowed to say she isn't a fan? Great point. And I wouldn't for one second say that OP is being shallow here. Someone else asked about money and age. We are both in our mid thirties, her mum gave her the money as a gift. OP finally says that ultimately he has not stopped loving his wife. He's just not attracted to her face. Now, the person who's compiled all of this stuff and posted it on r slash best of Redditor updates, where of course the majority of these stories are posted, if you didn't know that, that is where I find them on Reddit, has said that OP has responded to a lot of comments. Most of them are people who can't seem to wrap their heads around the fact that he does love her, but isn't currently attracted to her. Some bring up, well, what if she was in a car accident and needed plastic surgery? Would you hate her then? Well, she wasn't in an accident. Yeah, I mean, personally, I think that's completely fair. She has chosen to do this to herself. You said beforehand that you didn't want her to do it. And now you're less sexually attracted to her. That's fine. It doesn't change the fact that you still love her. And OP is not for one second saying that he loves her any less now. But she's changed her physical appearance that you were attracted to in the first place. Ultimately, physical appearance is a big part of attraction. I think everyone could admit that. Not saying that, you know, personality and love doesn't come into it. But it just has to be. So yeah, I think he's completely right to say, well... I'm less attracted to you. You've changed your appearance. I mean, I might get hate for this in the comments down below, but I would go as far to say that it's the same as if somebody, now, naturally, not saying if there was any medical reason involved or whatever, say your partner put on loads and loads of weight and just got obese. I think you'd also be allowed to say, I'm less attracted to you. You've changed your physical appearance. That's a little bit more debatable. It really is. But I think that that's fair. Again, as long as it's natural and there's not a medical reason for it. Let me know in the comments down below, guys. Do you agree with that? That is contentious. It really is. But I want to hear your thoughts. Anyway, let's get into the update. This was posted three days later. My wife came home yesterday and we finally had a long talk. She told me that the reason she had the surgery was because her mum and sister talked her into it. They convinced her that she was starting to look old and that I would find someone else to be with if she didn't do something. That was why her mum gave her the money for the operations. Her mum and sister looked like Bruce Campbell in Escape from la again if you can't see this if you're on a podcast platform or you're just not watching right now just yeah imagine someone with loads of botox and their skin is just pulled tight and it just doesn't look natural at all i mean personally that goes far to say it's pretty disgusting but um yeah that now is making more sense to me if her mum and sister already look like this and were the ones persuading her to do it i can understand why she might have done it op continues they are the very last people on the planet that should be telling anyone to get plastic surgery i used some of the comments i read on my post as talking points i told her that i loved her and that she was the person that i wanted to spend my life with i told her that the surgery would take a while longer to settle down and that as i got more used to her new face I would learn to appreciate it. Fair enough. She asked me if I wanted her to see if she could get it reversed. I almost screamed at her. The last thing in the world I want is for her to F up her face more than it already is. I asked her if she could please just leave it and let me get used to it. Imagine that regret, by the way, getting loads of facial surgery and then saying, oh, I actually want it reversed. Jeez. We talked for about three hours and we decided that her mum and sister would not be a part of any decisions in our life going forward. She's going to leave her face alone and give me a chance to get used to it. We're going to look for a marriage counsellor and maybe individual counsellors for each of us. I'm going to make an effort to show her every day how I still find her desirable and she is going to make an effort to believe me when I tell her that I love her the way she is. We're going to talk to her mum and sister and tell them that we're taking a break from them. We're going to block them get our stuff together before we allow them back into our lives thank you to everyone who tried to help me 
Now, I'd like to add that I did not think that there were that many guys out there with a weird blue squid lady fetish. It isn't for me, but you do you. Oh, I understand. OP is referencing the first person he said from, what, Fifth Elemental or something. I guess some people said in the comments down below that they actually quite like that look. Uh, yeah, weird. Right, let's round things off with some comments. Someone said, many tough elements here. Her self-esteem, body dysmorphia, being influenced by her mum and sister, you losing attraction for now, which leads us to the fifth element. Oh, God. <laughs> Saying that was funny, if they do say so themselves. Glad you're making the effort and continuing to love your wife. Opie replies, I can't stop loving her. Someone else asked, did you use the movie references when talking with your wife? I did not. The closest I got was pointing out that a bad haircut and a kimono and I could pass for a skinny version of Associate Bob. And again, here is a picture. Oh, I guess OP was kind of referencing the fact that he's not the best looking, but that's not the most important thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, crazy haircut, I've got to say. Someone else said, her mum and sister will at least look shocked when you break it to them. Oh, gosh. But OP says, no, they won't. They have the facial mobility of bilateral stroke victims. Wow. Bilateral stroke victims. I might have to use that as an insult, by the way. That is phenomenal. Finally, OP has said, we're going to work at it. There's a long road ahead. I will spend the rest of my life showing her she is the woman I want. Well, there you go. Fair play, OP, is all I can say to that. Um, because ultimately, something's happened there to the person you love that you really don't like. And you're going to have to deal with that. Because ultimately, you're the one that looks at her every day. Uh, so that's on you. I do feel, though, like he is right. And I think he accepts that attraction can build over time. I do think the most important part of, personally, this is a part of, of, of like sexual attraction or attraction in general is the way you feel about somebody, less their physical appearance. I mean, th I'm, I think that's kind of obvious, maybe. I mean, maybe some people don't agree with me there, but emotionally, how invested you are in somebody and how they make you feel and, and your relationship with them is, is way more important than how they look, even if they're like a 10 out of 10. Doesn't matter. I mean, a four out of 10 that you really get on with is way more attractive than a nine out of 10. It was just horrible. I think we can all agree with that. 10 out of 10 is different, let's be honest. Uh, I'm only joking. But uh, yeah, in all seriousness, hopefully these guys just can can get through this i feel bad for your wife now op because she was just pushed into something that maybe she didn't actually want to do and now she's regretting it it's not the greatest situation but yeah as i said get some counseling give it some time i think you'll be all right my husband almost killed our baby and my toddler saved him this was originally posted on march the 11th 2024 hey reddit i need to share this story because i'm still shaking from what happened I am a 25 year old woman and I've been with my husband who is 30 since 2018. We have a three year old girl and a newborn boy, but tonight things almost took a turn for the worse. My husband has always had trouble paying attention, but I never thought it would come to this. Our neighborhood is weirdly laid out with cars zooming by at crazy speeds at all hours of the day. I was folding clothes when I heard our toddler screaming, dad, help. That tone made me drop everything and sprint outside. What I saw made my blood run cold. Our newborn in his stroller, careering towards the busy street. I screamed and ran to him, barely stopping the stroller in time. My baby girl's hands and knees were scratched up because she tripped trying to run after the stroller. I snatched up my baby, heart pounding, and scanned for my husband. He wasn't watching. He was chatting with neighbors, completely oblivious. The anger I felt was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I stormed up to him, shouting in disbelief. He looked shocked at first, then realized what almost happened. The apologies and tears came pouring out, but it was too late. I couldn't wrap my head around how he could be so careless, so blind to our toddler's screams and the stroller rolling away. I packed up the kids and left, staying with my parents. They're on my side, but my husband keeps texting, begging for forgiveness, calling it an honest mistake but I can't shake the terror of almost losing my baby because he couldn't focus for a single second. My baby girl got hurt in the process as well because he couldn't pay attention. I almost lost my son because he couldn't pay attention. I can't stop crying. I feel so guilty. I wish this all never happened. Sorry it's short. I just want to hold my babies and I can't stop shaking every time I think about it. What if I was just one second late? Would I have been planning a funeral? And the reason I left the house instead of him was because I hate that house. I don't feel like it's safe for the kids with all the traffic. And I was right. It's my husband's workhouse. 
I can't be running either. I had a C-section less than six weeks ago. A lot of people are saying, why wasn't I watching the kids? Well, I was doing their laundry like a parent. He was supposed to be taking them for a walk to have bonding time with them. He literally created this by himself. This has never happened before. How was I supposed to know? And people saying, why didn't I get him checked out? Well, I'm not his mother. He is 30 years old. I'm sick of people acting like I have to parent my own husband while I literally have a newborn toddler and I'm still healing from a C-section that I teared my stitches from when I ran to get my baby. I don't care if it was his ADHD. The court wouldn't care either. If he killed my child, he would have gone to prison either way. Okay, so that is it for the original post. Now let's get into some comments. Someone has said down below. Okay, look, he was 100% wrong and I would be livid just like you. However, I'm a little confused of the situation. Like, why was your baby just in a stroller, unattended? Why did the stroller randomly go into the road? Since it sounds like you were at home, is this maybe something you guys normally do just to have a place for the baby to sit out in front of your house when your toddler's playing outside? Maybe it was a freak accident. I'm going to be honest as a mum. Most of us have stories of near-death experiences with our kids. We can be naive and stupid and expect a little child to have more awareness or survival skills than they do. When my son was two, for example, we had a horrible experience with an escalator and I still have times where I can't sleep because of it. We're all idiots when it comes to parenting because how can you know until you live it? And seriously, like every parent has one of these moments unless you're one of those insanely lucky ones. I still really don't understand the whole scenario of what happened, but to me it seems he really has remorse and feels terrible. And once you go through something like that, you never forget it. So if he cares and loves your kids, he's devastated and has learned a hard lesson. I don't know that your response was the best, but I get why you did it in the moment. But I do think you guys should have a serious talk and maybe look into moving if possible. I wouldn't go straight to divorce like Reddit loves to preach. I think there is a solution here. And I'm so sorry you're dealing with this. It's literally the worst feeling in the world. What a very sensible comment. OP replies, Hi love, let me just clear it up for you. So I was sitting inside in the lounge room and there's a huge window behind the TV that was a little open so I could hear outside. That is when I heard my toddler scream for her dad to help. When I was outside, he was standing on the neighbor's driveway. I assume that he must have left the baby literally on the road because there was no possible way that it would have rolled off like that. And my toddler was playing with the neighbor's cat before she noticed her brother was rolling away when I confronted him about it. He tried to explain but just kept stuttering. I still don't know exactly what happened. I don't know if he didn't put the brakes on the stroller, if the wind blew it away. I just don't know. My neighbor contacted me and had asked if I wanted the security footage because his wife is 100% on my side. So I'll probably find out exactly what happened once it gets sent to me. Oh, wow. That could be telling. Now, someone else also commented, I want to acknowledge that this is a horrific situation, but saying I don't care if it was his ADHD isn't going to fix anything and will probably only make things worse. Talking and thinking about it like he intentionally tried to kill your child isn't going to help either. With ADHD, you actually do not register things like this at all sometimes. Life expectancy for those of us with ADHD is actually significantly lower because many of us end up often accidentally killing ourselves. It's not the same thing as carelessness, but learning about ADHD a little deeper can help you guys be safer. Understanding how my ADHD works and using different than standard precautions like my brain needs has actually most likely saved my life. Wow, I did not know anything about this. Guys, if you know about this, enlighten me in the comments. I want to be educated. This person continues. Lie out what you want from him. That's probably that he gets his ADHD better under control, whether that be through prescription medication or more homeopathic methods, that you get a different place if possible, that he not take your kids out in your front yard without you, etc. Also, neither he nor the neighbor noticed, but you heard your kid from inside. Well, something seems off here. Were your neighbors just watching the stroller roll towards the street? Was your husband on the other side of your house where he couldn't see the stroller? Were you already walking outside as this unfolded? I'm just trying to understand better what was going on here and why your husband or the neighbor didn't notice, but you did from inside. People with ADHD tend to be incredibly good and quick to act in emergency situations. So this is especially weird. I'm absolutely not accusing you of leaving anything out or anything, but asking you to think about what your husband and the neighbor were doing that neither of them noticed. That smells fishy. This is, of course, a horrible situation. 
I lost the pet due to the inattentiveness of ADHD, but I can't imagine losing or even nearly losing a child. OP replies, that is why I'm waiting for the footage. It doesn't make sense how this all happened. I don't know how to explain my house. There's a huge window in the lounge room. It was open a little so I can listen out. The neighbor's house is two houses away. We're at the end of the street near the main road. When you first walk into my house on your left, that is the lounge. And on the right, there's the kitchen. When I got up, I couldn't run that fast as I'm still healing. Sorry if this doesn't make sense. But when I ran outside, the neighbor's wife was running for the stroller, but was still far away. And the neighbor was helping my little girl off the road. That's all I saw. I'm just waiting for a response from them. My husband, though, was just standing there, hands on his head, doing nothing. Okay, and then one final comment. Somebody said, I freaking screamed when I read what happened. Are you okay? Like, did you get any more damage to yourself? You literally just had a baby. What the F was your husband doing? Like, being outside with small children, especially on a busy street, should be treated like watching babies swim because anything can happen in an instant. I hope you're okay. And also, I don't know, but do you all have cameras in your house? I wonder how long your husband was talking to the neighbor. OP says they tore their stitches from the C-section and had to go to the ER while there. I made sure my baby girl got her knees and hands bandaged up. The crazy thing is, I didn't even realize I was bleeding until I was in my parents' car. My mum pointed it out. She panicked, took baby boy back to their house, and my dad took me and my daughter to the hospital. All right, there's quite a lot to unpack here, and I think I kind of agree with what the comments are getting at a little bit. There probably is more context here that is going to be revealed in the update, which we're going to get into in just a moment. But I want to give my thoughts on, on what we've read so far. I do think it is a bit weird that, that neither your husband nor the neighbor heard the scream of your children and you did from being inside i mean maybe they were just totally wrapped up in conversation but you'd expect them to hear it maybe it was just where they were and for whatever reason the direction of the sound travel i don't know i don't think as as someone said there that your husband was intentionally not listening out or you know neither him nor the neighbor heard something on purpose but i do also agree with the point that this sort of stuff does probably happen more regularly than you'd think i mean parents get in the comments down below i'm sure the vast majority of you have had a situation like this happen very sadly but you get away with it i mean i guess it's kind of just part of raising a child situations like this that are sketchy are bound to happen i mean i know a couple that have happened in my life crashing a bike for example when i was very young now i mean that could have gone terribly wrong but thankfully I only ended up with just like scarring on my face. Actually, you know what? Can I, I don't even know if I'm allowed to show. I actually, I'm not, you know what's so weird about YouTube? I'm not even allowed to show a picture of me as a child with like scars or down my face. Cause that's like child endangerment. You know what? I'll just chuck it on my Instagram as a story. If you want to follow me on Instagram, link down below. It's, it's in the description, but yeah, I can't show it on here. But the point is it happens to every kid and you know, you get away with it or tragically sometimes you don't but i don't think that's like you know i wouldn't go crazy on my husband for doing this it's just a terrible situation and yeah i think you'll learn from it but yeah those are my thoughts so far however 11 days later we did get this update oh i do apologize guys the update was actually 11 hours later on the same day here it is the neighbor's wife sent me the footage and i really can't wrap my head around it so my husband was walking with the stroller and my toddler was in front of them when they passed the neighbor's house. My neighbor was outside washing his car and my toddler saw his pet cat and stopped to go and pet it. So my husband stopped, left my baby on the road. He didn't even bother locking the wheels and walked all the way up the driveway, not even bothering looking back at the baby. He had his back facing towards him for about five minutes before the stroller just suddenly started moving. I think it's because the road is on a hill or it could have been the wind. My toddler never went near the stroller. It couldn't have been her. The stroller went down the road and so did my toddler. That is when she started screaming and running for it when she saw what was happening. The neighbor then started running after my daughter when she tripped. He tried to pick her up and that is when the neighbor's wife's car comes into frame. She stops, starts running back to the way the stroller is coming and after that, you can't really see anything because it's all out of frame, but you can hear all the commotion. And my husband is just stood there the whole time, hands on head with a blank stare on his face. He didn't even do anything when our toddler was crying from hurting herself. He only started crying when I confronted him. What do I do? I genuinely do not know what to do. 
I'm panicking. This was never the life I wanted for my kids. I don't understand why he was just standing there. I've not even gotten a text or a call from him since I got sent the video. It's just been silent. I just can't get the sound of my daughter's screams out of my head. That's the sound no mother wants to hear. I can't explain it in the moment, but it felt like my blood went cold and I just felt pure fear. I never want to watch the footage again. Well, there we go. I mean, that is that is all the context we needed. And I've got to say that normally I'd, I'd try and give someone the benefit of the doubt here, as I was saying, you know, in my previous comments that this sort of thing does generally happen. But given the actions of your husband there, I, I just can't, I can't give him any sort of kind of excuse. I can't help him at all here. There's like three or four different things he's done, which are just inexcusable and life-threatening. I mean, first of all, not taking the stroller with you, leaving it on the road. I don't know if you mean, by the way, leaving it on the road or the sidewalk or the pavement or whatever, but I mean, near the road where there are cars obviously passing on a little bit of a hill, whatever, it doesn't even matter. Leaving your, your, your baby unattended. Also, it seemed like you left your toddler unattended slightly as well, but more your baby next to the road or on the road and being turned away from the stroller for what five minutes chatting to your neighbor is crazy i mean honestly i think that is grounds enough for a divorce i just don't understand why you wouldn't just bring the stroller with you i just don't then after that the reaction when something is happening just standing there doing nothing is also crazy i mean that perhaps is a little bit more understandable because he could have just gone into shock at that moment not believing what he's seeing but still you'd want more in that moment i mean something like this in theory could happen again it, it wouldn't i mean hopefully wouldn't be you know the fault of your husband the next time but something like that where your child is in danger it could definitely happen you'd want him to react at least do something at least chase i don't know or at least show some emotion immediately after not just when you have a go at him for say saying what on earth are you doing it's mental and i think the main thing is that i just don't know how you can ever trust him again with your children like you know say you're at work he's got the kids for the day i don't know how your mind's not going over and over and over like the anxiety would be crazy the whole day i don't know how you'd focus on anything else other than thinking this man almost killed or caused the death of, of one of my children maybe even two i mean who knows the toddler could have easily gone into the road as well trying to save the stroller and and her sibling <sighs> yeah i don't know I, I think i think it's a crazy thing to say but given what we've seen now from the footage, I think you've got to leave this man. Let me know if you agree in the comments down below. Maybe I'm being too harsh, but I'm just not sure how you could ever trust them again. Okay, now moving on to our second story of this episode. Would I be the jerk here? My niece wants my wedding dress and I think I'm going to refuse. I married 30 years ago and was lucky enough to have a custom made dress. I was very thin at the time and the dress design I chose was not typical 90s. Think more Regency style dress. I stored it away and carried on with life. I was blessed with sons and one daughter. I'll be honest, my daughter is a totally different body shape to me. And I realized when she hit puberty, she would never wear my dress. She has a beautiful hourglass figure, whereas I was catwalk model thin. My brother has two adult daughters, one built like my daughter, the other thinner. This is the one who asked for my dress after she got engaged at Christmas. Now, I don't like this girl. She is immature for a 27 year old. She's an attention seeker and intentionally unemployed hypochondriac. She's one of those people on Facebook who post cryptic comments. And when someone inquires what's wrong, she responds with, I'll message you, hun. Oh my God. Sorry, that has just triggered me. Like, oh my God. That's probably my least favorite people ever. That is like a, a 10, 15 year memory in me that's just been unlocked there from just random girls posting the absolute trash on Facebook and everyone being like, I don't care. But then they'd be like, oh no, where is me? Please, someone give me attention. I'll message you, babes. That sort of absolute, uh, here we go, shy to I despise. Wow. I don't know if I wanted that memory to be unlocked, but it just has been. Thanks, OP. I dread any family events with her attendance because guaranteed she'll become ill at some point. Oh, attention seeking again. And her mum will have to take her home or find her a room to rest. Or she'll talk over the speeches or demand to dance with the host every time. It gets old. I don't have a close relationship with any of that side. And my husband and kids think she has Munchausen's. Now, I didn't know this, but Munchausen's syndrome is a mental condition in which a person repeatedly seeks medical attention for falsified, exaggerated, or self-inflicted physical symptoms. Yeah, I guess that's just attention-seeking by claiming you're ill. So, she sends me a text saying, Hi, auntie. 
just got engaged and really want to wear your dress for the big day Have you still got it? I haven't responded yet I called my mum asking how my niece even knew about the dress. She said because she told her Mum said that she offered the dress knowing it was stored away and that because my niece was on a budget using my dress would be a good idea And it's not like your daughter will wear it because she's so large. She said that hurt She's not large. She's just got boobs and a butt that women pay good money for That's a difference. By the way, imagine your own grandma saying that about you. What the heck? So after laying into my mother about insulting my kid and then laying into her again for offering something that didn't even belong to her, I hung up. I'm not a sentimental person. I love the dress, but if my daughter wanted to cut it up and use pieces of it, I wouldn't mind. I just don't want to see it on my niece and I don't want to deal with the drama if I say no. All right, let's get into some relevant comments. First of all, someone asked about Opie's mum in general. Opie says, she has her moments. One Christmas Eve years ago, she called me to tell me she had just invited distant relatives to Christmas day dinner. The Christmas day dinner that I was cooking in my home. I told her to call them back and disinvite them or I'd feel no guilt refusing their and her entry to my home when they arrived. She got really angry and complained how bad it would look on her if she had to phone them back and cancel. I said I didn't care. Christmas day came and went and my parents didn't arrive, nor did the relatives. She didn't speak to me until March. Someone else asked, why isn't the girl looking for her own mother's dress? She's way too entitled. My brother never married his daughter's mother, Opie replied. She did marry someone else later on, but it wasn't a traditional wedding with a dress. Opie continues saying, I don't hate my niece. I could list the things I admire about her, but it still wouldn't make me want to give her my dress. I mean, yeah, from my perspective here, um, you don't have to give anyone anything that's yours ever. It like, doesn't matter who they are. Now, on top of that, given the fact that you actually dislike this person, yeah, simple as that. I don't think anything else needs to be said. Clean. Clean cut for me. But a couple of days later, in fact, just the very next day, March the 4th, we got this update. Thank you for all your comments. They gave me good advice and highlighted things I hadn't actually thought about. One suggestion was that I should answer back ASAP. That my niece may take the silence as no news is good news and imagine that she has permission i believe she'd be the kind of person to post on facebook thank you auntie for giving me your dress without getting a response so i texted her back a few hours after her initial text the next recommendation was to hide the dress there were also suggestions that my mum may have already shown her the dress so get it back Luckily, my mum doesn't have the dress at her home. It's in my possession and it isn't in easy access. You'd have to know where it is to find it. Our home also has cameras, but I don't think that my niece is that determined. She's very much a, if it's hard work, I can't be bothered kind of person. I called my daughter and had a conversation regarding what she would like me to do with the dress. She liked the idea of using pieces for her wedding and maybe making keepsakes for any daughter-in-laws that enter our lives. So that decision has been settled. The last recommendation was to ensure that all interested parties were kept in the loop and made aware of my decision so there's no miscommunication later down the line. So I copied my text response to my niece and I sent it to my brother and my niece's mother to ensure they all knew. I'll tell my own mum when I've calmed down and feel like talking to her again. Yeah, after you get over the fact that she called your daughter, her granddaughter, fat. Onto the text. No is a complete answer, but once again, I feel that my mum needed to be called out for her part in all of this. Our mother has a habit of volunteering her family's time and resources to make herself look good. There's a lot of resentment with us kids over this behavior. So here it is. Hi, niece. Once again, congratulations on the engagement news. I'm so happy for you both. I do still have my dress, but I'm afraid that Nana misled you to believe my dress was available to be loaned out. My dress has great sentimental value to me and my daughter will be the only other person to have access to it. I'm sure when you contact Nana again, she'll be able to help to find you an alternative dress. See you all at Easter. She texted back immediately. Okay, thanks anyway. I copied this message to my brother with a comment. This is for you to deal with in case there is drama. Mama has been trying to play the hero with other people's things again. He hasn't responded yet. So that's it for now. I checked my niece's Facebook page this morning and there were no passive aggressive memes or comments that I can see about family not supporting her or not being the favorite and that's how she likes it. So hopefully this will blow over. Hopefully. Yeah, well dealt with OP. Pretty uh, cut and dry this one. I think there's not much to it. Just as long as she doesn't go like pandering to the rest of the family or again, playing the victim on, on social media, like virtue signaling, that sort of stuff. I think that's fine. 
I think that is fine. Stalk my daughters. I'll stalk you back. This was a few years ago. I think 2018, 19, pre-COVID at any rate. So I'm a bit fuzzy on ages, but I think my sister and I, I am a woman by the way, were 30 or 31 and 21 or 22 respectively. But basically, we were followed by a strange man. We were on holiday at the time and we'd left our mum in a pub to go and grab a couple of cute things from a shop and to go play with a local stray cat who lived at one of the squares. She's since been adopted by a family. It's a place we've been going to since we were both babies, so we know our way around blindfolded and we generally feel safe in the area that we were in. Now, on our walk back to the pub, we realized we were being followed by somebody we didn't know. He wasn't being subtle about it. So we walked a different way to try and throw him off before going back to our mum. As you may imagine, this was extremely alarming to us, particularly because we were in a foreign country. Our friend who owned the pub offered to call the police on the guy since he was still obviously loitering around the corner. My mum though had a different approach. She was a formidable woman who didn't take any nonsense and was fiercely protective of her daughters. If someone like a Karen tried to start an argument with her, as once happened on a flight, they would quickly regret it because she always won. She once quit her job after one too many insults from her boss, knowing her boss couldn't function without her and would come begging her to come back. And she was right. So my mum decided to stalk this strange man back. My sister and I decided to follow along because it sounded intriguing. We watched as he tried to hide behind trees. It did not work and eventually got so uncomfortable with my mum's relentless pursuit that he fled across the main road and she pursued him even then until he was finally gone from our sights that is amazing i mean this is just brilliant it's absolutely comical in my mind it just i just want to see this happen this has to be turned into some sort of skit or something or some sort of episode on a comedy show i mean it's just so good what a great way to just completely unnerve someone and hopefully make this man realize that what he's doing is so creepy i mean it is also illegal but just mainly just so weird like what is going on your mum by the way absolutely legendary i hope she haunts this man for a very long time and to be honest i mean might as well keep up the stalking it's so funny deceased father's girlfriend is going down so this will be a developing story over the next few months just getting started my father passed away three weeks ago he was a hard worker into real estate and a man of means he has seven properties five cars and liquid cash His girlfriend that chased him down nine years ago was his carer until death. In the last two to three years, she began to isolate my father from his four kids. She'd attempt to keep us out of the home and stand at the door and say he was sick. We would push our way in and he never rejected us. I think we all know what she's trying to do here. November 4th last year, I went out of the blue to his house and he was lying there dying. I took a video. He was septic and wouldn't have made it through the night if I hadn't found him. I sent him to the hospital. He went back again a week later and was placed on hospice. This female dog, I've since found out, deleted my number from his phone. She then got him a new phone about two weeks before he died to confuse him so he wouldn't know how to use it. He asked my siblings and son for my number three times to call me before death and he never called. Oh my gosh. I suspect that she kept him from calling. I must fill in this blank. She drove a wedge between us and talked to me like a dog from November to December when I went no contact. I sent a letter expressing my hurt and that I loved him. She presented an electronic will, leaving her everything. Now, e-wills are not valid in my state. She sent a text from his phone to hers back in January stating that he was leaving her two homes. It was in broken English, so I know it was her dad doesn't even text he didn't know how so she is losing everything her car the house they shared everything i'm even thinking of suing her for mental and emotional abuse of my dad the car he bought for her is in his name that's gone oh and she also ranted over his casket at his children and grandchildren all on video i'm going to ruin her wow also a quick update we're getting temporary orders of administration over the estate and filing eviction tomorrow and we confiscate vehicles this sunday with sheriff escort 
winning. Well, that is amazing to hear. Wow. I mean, the ending for that is great. Uh, that is great to see that, that she's, you know, losing everything. It's just a terrible, terrible case, isn't it? It's a terrible story. Ultimately, though, I do feel like, is there not some form of like attempted murder charge here that you could be going for? I know you probably don't want to do this and it's horribly morbid and it's so sad and just very, very, you know, distressing for you and the family. But if you found your dad pretty much dying in front of you, well, you said dying like he was septic. And it's because of her lack of looking after him. That's the reason why he's in that position. It has to be. Then is there not a, a charge or a potential case for attempted murder there? I don't know what you've got so far. The, the temporary orders of administration over the estate. The fact that she's going to be in a much worse place after your dad's death than she was before. Despite the fact that, yeah, she clearly was just going for all his money and, and property in the first place. I think there's more, there's more you could do here. I don't know. It's up to you. But I do feel like there's more that could be done. Let me know in the comments down below. Is attempted murder not on the cards here i'm not sure let me know annoying middle school attendance lady years ago i called the middle school attendance office to have my two boys sent to the office so i could take them out of school for a family emergency the attendance lady was not happy about this and went on a rant about how i should have sent a note with them a day or two in advance and then she would have had them in the office now she has to send a student to each of their rooms to get them and this could take 30 minutes it's a very old building with no intercoms to each room Sir, do you understand what an inconvenience it is for me to stop my students from doing an assigned task and have them go and get your children? I was trying to interject, but she wasn't having it. She continued on and on about how all of the protocols are in the student handbook if I would have just taken the time to read it at the beginning of the year. She then finally stopped long enough for me to speak. Mom, you're absolutely right. I'm sorry I didn't send a note with the boys. Now, unfortunately, their grandfather didn't give me advance notice that he was going to have a heart attack this morning. The surgeon performing his open heart surgery didn't give us any advance notice either. We have to leave town immediately. The stuttering and awkwardness was amazing. Honestly, it was hysterical and a great stress reducer while he was in surgery. My dad loves that story oh so he survived that is even better yeah the word that springs to mind here is just jobsworth as i said i'm very happy that, that your granddad wasn't actually dead i thought he was and then i thought it was going to be an extremely sarcastic response from your dad something along the lines of well unfortunately we didn't get advance notice that my dad was about to die but at least he's still alive and hopefully he could even laugh at this story absolutely insane i mean is it that hard to go and get students out of a classroom also just send an email that's what we did at my school. The teachers got an email and they were on their computers anyway. Or yeah, just send a kid around to go and get them. It's not that hard. And in familial emergencies like this, obviously it has to be done. You just haven't had the right D yet. So I, a 19 year old woman, only date femme folks. Sexual tastes are a bit broader. Much of the support of most of my family and all of my friends. The friends of my friends, not so much. One of those friends, unfortunately, had a Klingon in their circle. A jerk will call Bill. Bill has certain views on relationships and women, and is not very happy with queer people. He likes to make small comments on the fact that I only date women, and even more so, that I'm dating two people. Oh, the horror. And only one is a woman, the other being a femboy. Now, he got a bit drunk one night, and his comments were getting a little bit aggressive. I was cuddling with one of my partners and exchanging small kisses, but eventually he said two things that everyone should hate. The classic of, you just haven't had the right D yet, as well as a new one I'd never heard. You just need to try it once. I volunteer. Oh my gosh. My partner tries to stop me because she could see I was getting mad, but it was too late. Someone told me that once, I said. Then he R-worded me so I could try it once. Now I can't trust anyone who presents masculine like you. He got very defensive over this, acting like I was accusing him of something and carrying on. He was promptly asked to leave by the friend he was connected to and i haven't heard or seen him in two months so hurrah yeah i mean this one is just crazy <sighs> absolutely crazy who in their right mind would ever say something like this it's just insane what are you supposed to even do in response to this i mean you didn't have to say what you did but i'm kind of thankful that you did Although, it doesn't even seem like he learned from that. He just, as you say, got defensive and then carried on. So really, I mean, did he actually learn from that at all? Probably not, which is just mad, but yeah, crazy.
Although I guess if you haven't seen him in two months, that is a good thing. But it shouldn't take you having to say something like this to him for him to not be around anymore. Also, I mean, your friend who is his friend who brought him in, in the first place surely should have realized he's just a creepy guy. I mean, like, unless he's just not a good friend in the first place, you should expect your friends to have good friends, I reckon. I mean, it's not up to you, but if they are in your same or, or similar circles, you can't be expecting someone like this to be knocking about. I mean, it's just disgraceful. I mean, you could also argue that, you know, how does Bill not know that he's gay? He just needs a good big D, uh, for want of a better phrase, and it'll, it'll magically change him. Has he tried it? No. How can he possibly know? Customer asks, I have cancer. What's wrong with you? So I put my wig on the counter. Back during the mask mandate, I worked in one of the big brand jewelry stores commonly found in shopping malls. On this boring day, it was only me and my assistant manager. We'll call her Lisa, working. In the afternoon, a man, probably in his mid-30s, comes into the store. I do my usual greeting and get ready to work with him when Lisa clears her throat and pulls on her mask a bit. I didn't even realize that the man wasn't wearing a face covering, so I politely offer him a mask so I can help him. Of course, he goes on a rant, saying he knows his rights and the usual mumbo-jumbo we've all heard. I tell him, I'm sorry, but I have a weak immune system and I can't risk getting sick. This earns me a grunt and him snapping at me, I have cancer, what's wrong with you? I give him no answer and take my wig off and drop it on the counter in front of me. He sputters and tries to apologize, saying he didn't know. He then decides to tell my coworker and me, both early 20s females, about his testicular cancer, talking way too much about his naughty bits for our liking. I guess that that was his way of trying to diffuse the awkwardness and shame. I've walked to the other side of the store and my coworker dealt with him. At some point, I heard him say to her, I'd ask what kind of cancer she has, but... Now Lisa and I share a knowing look. I never actually said I had cancer. My hair fell out when I was a kid and never grew back. That's all it is. No sickness, just my immune system being stupid. Oh, wow. Eventually, he buys an engagement ring and scurries away. I've honestly never seen a customer walk out so fast paced. Lisa and I crack up laughing once we thought he was out of hearing range before going back to being bored on a slow day. That is actually phenomenal. I mean, it's a great thing that you don't have cancer, but also the fact that you slightly inferred that you did while not actually saying that you did and him thinking, oh my God, what have I done? is so good as well. I think just to clarify what I mean here, I mean like it's, it's a good thing that you don't have cancer. I mean, that's obviously a, a, a flat good thing, but I think it's also a good thing that that you made him think that you did have cancer, despite the fact that you didn't lie about having cancer, which would have been weird. Him him thinking that you have cancer, I think is a good thing and, and should, in theory, although I've said this with like everyone else in this, in this video really, should in theory make him think twice about doing something similar in the future. But I don't know guys, I mean, I'm just looking through this again. Does he, like he scurries away and is obviously embarrassed. Will he do something like this in the future? I don't know. I also kind of do feel a bit bad for him. Like if he has cancer, then, it's just a terrible thing to have obviously so let's let's cut him a little bit of slack he's probably going through a lot right now but it doesn't excuse you know being really rude and it also doesn't excuse not wearing a mask i mean surely you can still wear a mask when you have cancer if anything wouldn't you still want to have a mask on i mean more than ever so you don't get you know you're not at risk of, of getting an infection which would make your immune system even weaker right your friendly neighborhood cripple is back this just happened today and I'm still giddy with glee. Hello, I'm your friendly neighborhood cripple. For those of you just joining us, I, a 50 year old woman, am paralyzed from the bra band down due to a catastrophic illness. It's been almost 10 years since I was paralyzed and I have tons of stories which I share here for your enjoyment. To mitigate my disability and help me get around in the world, I have a power wheelchair and a service dog. I'm not exaggerating at all when I say the trash that comes my way could fill a three month supply of my colostomy bags and then some. For our newcomers, I am the way I am as I grew up in a suburb of NYC, was bullied constantly my entire school life and grew up with an older brother. He and his friends made my life a living heck until I honed my sarcasm, sharpened my tongue and learn to think quickly to give as good as I got. Usually, I ended up turning it around and making it worse for the person who insulted me. In addition to all of this, my husband and I recently moved from our lovely New York adjacent suburb to North Carolina. It's a lower cost of living. I still get excellent medical care. We've got a house that's fully accessible in a lovely neighborhood, etc. People here say things to you in a sickly sweet or very kind voice, 
but what sounds like a compliment is often an insult. Now that you're all caught up, on to the story. Today we went to Costco. My hair is a gorgeous dark purple, and as my service dog Cap and I are wheeling around, I see a shirt I like. I go to look at said shirt. It was one of those super soft casual cuts in an amazing shade of green. A younger woman, maybe mid-30s, looks at me and nods politely. I smile and nod back and begin checking out the shirt that caught my eye. She's next to me, also checking out the shirt, just in a different color. She says to me, You are so brave to have purple hair. I could never do something like that. In that, oh, bless your heart tone. Oh, no, I replied. What's brave is a woman your age wearing that. A vague gesture to her clothes. What? What's wrong with it? Well, those jeans are definitely a choice. Plus, open-toed shoes when your feet look like that? I wish I had half your confidence. You'll have a great day. At that point, I decided against the shirt, since the shade of green made me look like a shade of corpse that was just not flattering. Not that any shade of corpse is flattering, but this was the least flattering shade of corpse I'd ever seen. Cap and I zoomed off to find my lost husband, leaving her to stare at her perfectly nice jeans and perfectly normal feet in perfectly normal open-toed shoes. I wonder what the frick was wrong with them and probably wonder why a woman in her mid-30s shouldn't be wearing perfectly nice jeans with a perfectly nice sweater and perfectly normal open-toed shoes. I'll be living rent-free in her head for a long, long time. Until next time, because there's always a next time, your friendly neighborhood cripple. Now, just some more info to add. Several people have raised the question if she was actually complimenting me. Sadly, friends, she wasn't. Her tone of voice was the one reserved for very stupid dogs, very stupid husbands, or very ugly babies. That saturine, false sweet tone that indicates disdain behind what would otherwise be complimentary words. Like calling your dog brilliant because they started themselves awake by farting and give their butt a look like it betrayed them. Now, I am guilty of that last one. Peggy does it regularly. And everyone, it's hilarious. Yeah, that is fair enough. I was kind of thinking, are you sure she's not actually complimenting you? But I guess when you're in real life, when you hear the tone, you would know if someone's being sarcastic. All right, guys, let me know in the comments down below because this is the first time I've ever come across this user. And I've got to say, from the style of writing and just the general tone, I love this person and I want to read more stories from them about similar sort of things that have happened. I can't quite believe I've not seen a story from OP before, but I don't think I have. Comment down below. Do you want to see more from this user? Because I reckon, I've not had a look, but I reckon they've got loads and loads of posts that are probably equally as funny as this one. I mean, on this one, just well done. Well done. It's an unnecessary comment from anyone to ever comment on someone else's appearance or style when they're just strangers. So yeah, you just shut her up instantly. It sounded like you just clapped back right away. And you're so right. It's, it makes it better that she's wearing normal stuff that probably looks pretty nice. Because now she's going to be second guessing probably her entire wardrobe and thinking, oh my God, what did she see? What can I not see? Why, why does she say this about my jeans when they're actually completely normal? It's so good. As you said, great phrase, rent free. My friend cheated on her husband and couldn't believe he moved on so quickly. My now ex-friend, a 27-year-old female called Sarah, has been with her husband, who is also 27, John, for over 10 years. Now, they aren't legally married, but they call each other wife and husband. They have two children together. Just last year in January, Sarah got caught cheating on John. It had been going on for a few months. She doesn't have a license or a car, he would drop her off at work and then she would leave with the guy afterwards. There'd be times where she says she's with someone, but she's actually with the guy. When she got caught, they separated for a bit. Once she found out he reconnected with his high school ex on social media, she went to directly message her and said that they're still together. He cheated on her instead. She cried to me about it and I looked at her like, what? I told her that he's only messaged that woman and you're already this hurt? Imagine how he felt when he found out you've been doing stuff with this guy. She promised everyone she wouldn't do it again. Fast forward to May. She got caught cheating again, and this time he was done with her. They were still living together, so at first the new guy would park at the street to pick her up. It eventually got to the point he was confident enough to park in front of the house. She moved out in June, and that was the end of their marriage. On to October. Sarah found out that he reconnected with his high school ex again, and that they're now dating. She went full on crazy and jealous mode. She asked him, of all people, why her? 
she made up lies to their kids and everyone else that he cheated on her with his high school ex she was the reason why they broke up in the first place during that time she was trying hard to get back with john but he wouldn't budge she made up all kinds of excuses to talk to him Sadly, she even stopped seeing her kids too. She'd pick them up at most once or twice a month, if lucky. Now, at this point, she was having problems with her new man. They were arguing every day to the point that he'd hit her a few times and chipped her tooth. Again, she cried to me, telling me that she couldn't believe that John would move on so quickly. Lately, John has been so mean to her and was always on his girlfriend's side. She even said that he loved his girlfriend more than he ever loved her. Now she's even making me choose to be friends with her or not. It was either her or John's girlfriend. Now at this point, my husband is close friends with John and there isn't much that I can do. I said to her, you cheated and messed up. You had it good with John, but because he wasn't what you wanted, you left him and your guy's kids. Now you found someone who hits you when John had never laid a hand on you. Needless to say, I'm glad that my relationship with her is over. So there we go. If you weren't sure exactly what this subreddit was all about before that story, surely now you know. Very self-explanatory, but really entertaining. Again, just what was she expecting? I've got no idea. She had it good, as OP said. Then she effed around and found out. Simple as that. To be fair, it's probably good for John that she did that to him in the long run. He probably now is happier with his new girlfriend and doesn't have this walking red flag as his partner anymore. Now moving on to our second Oh No Consequences post. Evicted because of EpiPen prank. Now this was originally posted to r slash am I the jerk but has been cross posted here. My brother and his son, Eli, nine, recently got evicted because my brother lost his job. My wife and I took them in because we have more room in our house than my aging parents have in their condo. My wife and I have a daughter, Naomi, who is 12. Now, my brother considers himself a jokester, and it was funny when we were kids, but in my opinion, it's immature at his age. He's passed this on to Eli, which is funny since he's nine. Eli's favorite prank is hiding other people's things. Now, Naomi is deathly allergic to many common things, so having an EpiPen on hand is absolutely necessary. Two weeks ago, Eli hid Naomi's EpiPen and she freaked out. Now, she wasn't having an allergic reaction at the time, but still. The thing is, the EpiPen was on a shelf which Eli is too short to reach. My brother admitted to helping Eli with the prank, and I chewed him out about it. I told him that if he or Eli hid Naomi's EpiPen again, I'd kick them out. I explained how Naomi could die without it, and my brother seemed to understand. Last week, Naomi actually did have an allergic reaction and needed her EpiPen, and it wasn't where she'd put it. Eli rushed to the guest room to get it, and thank goodness we were able to inject her before it got really bad. After I was done helping my daughter, I told my brother to get packing. He said that I wasn't being fair because Eli had stolen it on his own this time, that it was just a prank, and Eli's just a little kid, etc. Pretty much everyone is annoyed at me because my parents really don't have that much space for two extra people in their home. They're calling me heartless for kicking them out over a kid's prank. Again, what do you expect? I mean, come on. This, how is this ever a prank? Like, if Eli wasn't at home and nobody else could find where the EpiPen was, Naomi could easily have died. But it's a prank, guys. Relax, bro. It's just a prank. Like, I think if there's one thing that you just don't play with, it's people's life-saving medical devices. That, I think, is a commonly held belief. Uh, It's one that I have. It's one that I've had for the majority of my life. Um, And I think it's one that the majority of people should have as well. What's crazy is that your brother is, is saying, no, it's unfair. It was Eli on his own. Well, who enabled him to do this prank in the first place? Him. It's obviously his fault. And they've got to go. Am I the jerk for giving my ex-girlfriend her ticket for Taylor Swift, but cancelling everything else? I'm working overseas right now, and I managed to get tickets for Taylor Swift in Singapore. The concert is this coming Saturday. My plan was to fly my girlfriend over for a little vacation. It's a long ways from Connecticut, so she was going to be staying for 10 days. I was clear, and I told her that we'd have two weekends together, as well as the evenings, but that I still had to do work during the daytime. Last week, she called me and said that she was not okay with us being long distance and that after the concert, we were over. I asked for clarification. She said she would come for 10 days and that we could have fun, but that we were done. I can have fun without paying for it. I transferred her the one ticket and cancelled everything else. She called me to scream at me for cancelling the flights and hotel. I told her that I wasn't going to discuss it and I hung up. I blocked her on everything. 
I'm hearing from people back home that she has since lost her mind. She'd been bragging about getting to see Taylor Swift and the vacation. Now she's telling everyone that I cancelled the plans just out of the blue. I guess that is sort of true. I didn't discuss it with her before I made my decision and I did what I did. I mean, yeah, it's sort of true, but you had reason to. Come on. I unblocked her long enough to offer to buy the ticket back if she wasn't going to use it. That conversation was unpleasant and involved a lot of profanity. The upshot was that she would rather let it go to waste than let me have it. Her friends have been defending her and calling me a jerk. My position is that I would feel like a John flying her over for fun. Wow, the audacity to to message your boyfriend and say, look, I'm going to break up with you. Deal with that. But only after I come and enjoy a really nice holiday that you've paid for and this amazing Taylor Swift concert. And then we can also have some fun as well. But yeah, after that, yeah, we're done. Sorry about that. Again, as I've said now twice, what did you expect? I mean, it is just the definition of a gold digger, right? You know, make sure you get the, the value first. Like extract and squeeze your boyfriend for as much money as you possibly can and a fun time before eventually parting ways. It's great. It really is. It's, it's foolproof apart from the fact that it's so obvious what you're trying to do now for our fourth story old racist accused me of being a drug dealer but tried to play nice when she found out i was a federal agent this happened in the early 90s when i was in my mid-20s i was a federal agent a special agent with the inspector general office of a cabinet department inspector general agents investigate allegations of fraud waste and abuse in those federally funded programs after training i was assigned to an office in one of the playing states I was young, black, single, and bought my first car, a red convertible sports car. I resided in a nice apartment complex, which had a mix of tenants, young, old, single, and couples, but majority white. The department provided me a take-home car, so my car was mostly driven on the weekends. I wore a suit to work. I wasn't loud. I didn't throw wild parties on the weekends. I usually worked 10 hours or more per day, and I didn't have many visitors. I still consider myself a country boy and would speak to anyone I pass, especially if we make eye contact. Most neighbors, regardless of age or race, spoke if they saw you. But there was a particular older white female, possibly in her 70s, that I spoke to for months and she never uttered a word and would never look at me even if we were walking right past each other. I finally quit speaking when she did finally look at me and gave me a stink face. A month or two after I quit speaking, She started smiling and speaking, but I didn't respond. Unbeknownst to me initially, shortly after I moved in, she'd been calling the DEA and local law enforcement agencies saying that I was a drug dealer and needed to be checked out. I had a sports car that just sat there, even though she knew I drove two cars. My personal plates came back to my office address and the work plates showed not on file which meant another law enforcement agency running that play would have to contact the state DMV to physically pull the registration. The law enforcement agency she contacted wouldn't have told her I was also a law enforcement officer. After months of complaining about me to the management office, the maintenance man finally told her I was a federal agent. And that is when she began speaking, but I didn't respond. I was walking around the parking lot to cool down after a run, and she spoke to me again, saying... Hey there, Mr. Federal Agent. How are you? I gave her a side glance, but didn't say anything. And she responds, Look, I tried being nice. I'm not going to try anymore. I was annoyed. I initially started to let it go, but then I didn't want to go off on someone else later that didn't deserve it. So I turned around to verbally confront her. I was about eight feet from her and I didn't get any closer because I didn't want to be accused of trying to attack her. Racist or not, she was my elder, so I had to show her that courtesy. So I wasn't going to curse and I didn't want to yell. All these years later, I still remember most of that confrontation, which went something like this. You're not going to try anymore. Woman, I spoke to you for months and you never opened your mouth until you found out I was a federal agent. Do you think you can call other law enforcement agencies to have me checked out and I wouldn't find out about it? Well, your car just sits there and... I cut her off. You've seen that I drive two cars and I must be the lamest drug dealer around since I don't have many visitors and I don't come and go at odd hours either. But your car just sits there. I cut her off again. What about the young white girl that lives there? What does she do for a living? As I pointed to that unit. Did you call law enforcement on her? What does she do for a living? How does she afford to pay the rent here? The woman is just silent for over 10 seconds 
standing there looking stupid as I wait for a response. She's white, so she must be a law-abiding citizen. But I'm obviously another thuggish N-word. I'm not that kind of person. I have plenty of friends that are... Uh, now wait a minute. I don't use that word. Oh my goodness me. She was literally about to drop it. Yeah, that's why it almost came out of your mouth so freely. I'm polite and courteous to all of the other tenants here. Why couldn't I get the benefit of the doubt of being an honest and hardworking person? I'm supposed to forget that you accuse me of being a drug dealer just because I'm young, black and drive a nice car. You were calling law enforcement agencies saying that I needed to be checked out. You badmouthed me to the property manager and any neighbor that would listen to you. I'm supposed to overlook all your racist behavior simply because you're ready to play nice now. I hadn't been yelling, but at this point I started to. Don't ever talk to me. Don't ever say a word to me. Do like you did when I first moved in here and just keep walking by without saying a word. As this was taking place, Miss Ruth, another neighbor who happened to be an elderly white female, was walking by and said hi. I said hi, and I told the entitled woman that Miss Ruth didn't wait to find out about my employment before she started speaking to me. I later told Miss Ruth what my heated words to the woman were about, and she understood my anger. Miss Ruth was one of the neighbors that this other woman had complained to about me, and wouldn't listen when she pointed out that was no reason to accuse me of being a criminal. The entitled lady tried apologizing, and I told her I don't accept her hollow apology, and reiterated to never speak to me again. From that moment, whenever I saw her, she hung her head like a homeless, wet puppy. My apologies to homeless, wet puppies for putting them in the same bag with an old racist and wouldn't look at me. Yeah, guys, I mean, if we weren't sure, she was definitely 100% racist. Uh, she did just start to say the N-word there without any real hesitation. Jesus, what a disgrace. So weird. I mean, oh, no. Are you serious? A black guy with money has just bought a house, a property in my neighborhood? He must be a drug dealer. It, it just has to be. Oh, wait, he's not? All right, I'll be nice and talk to him then. You are a racist disgrace. I cut ties seven years ago with an ex-friend and she attempted to sabotage my relationship. Several weeks back, I made a post about an ex-friend, Rachel, who I cut off because of her possessiveness and jealousy. To briefly summarize, she confronted me at an outing and told me I would have to abide by her rules of needing her approval for anyone coming into my life. I cut her off and haven't spoken to her since. The previous post I made was about a mutual friend of ours who told me over the past several years, Rachel had caused most of our friend group to distance themselves from her. And Rachel asked to speak with me first to apologize, which she hoped would make our friends be more accepting of her apologies. I didn't agree to go along with this. And from what I heard, this caused her to call and text our friends going back and forth between bashing everyone and then begging for their forgiveness. I've had her blocked everywhere, so she didn't attempt to reach me. I've been with my girlfriend for a few years, and she's really amazing. Now, she is aware of Rachel and knows how problematic she was while we were friends. Yesterday, Rachel sent her a message on social media accusing me of cheating and providing dates and times of this cheating. These dates were days that I was with my girlfriend, so they didn't match up. She showed me the messages and asked if she could press further for more information, which I agreed to out of curiosity. Rachel began to word vomit and lie after lie was being sent to the chat. My girlfriend thanked her and said she would speak to me, but we left it at that. This morning, my girlfriend made a post of the both of us out on a date this past weekend with pictures and some loving words. A couple of hours later, my friend B said that Rachel was calling the last of our friends that she speaks to with the same accusations of me being a cheater. Nobody believed her. She lashed out at them and they're now all blocking her. As of right now, Rachel has been on social media having a meltdown, posting about betrayal, fake friends, and oddly, the one who got away. I can't say with certainty she's referring to me as this one, but it would explain a lot. Now, OP, I've got to say, I'm just happy that you are very secure in your relationship with your girlfriend because, you know, a less secure relationship that's, that's going along perfectly fine, right? You know, it could be just in like the early phases where you're both trying to work each other out and you're both not entirely sure, but you know, you're both in it, but you're not like, you know, years and years down the road. Or alternatively, you could be years and years down the road and the relationship might not be as secure at any moment in time for any particular reason. And these sort of accusations and made up lies could seriously hurt it. They really could. I mean, if you get a random message from someone or even if it's like someone's, your, your partner's friend and they say this sort of stuff, you know, out of nowhere, 
by the way your partner is cheating on you or has cheated on you and you don't know that they have like a, an ulterior motive or just doing it you know out of spite like you know, this girl clearly was then you might think to yourself oh my gosh what's going on here and you know, either you would break up with them or lose a lot of trust or you know the relationship could go awry that's why I say I'm thankful that, you know, your, your girlfriend just went to you straight away. I was just like, uh, what's going on here? This doesn't make any sense, but I just want to let you know what's going on. Lucky is all I can say. Not lucky, but, you know, you've done well to be in a relationship like this that can't be broken up as easily as others potentially could be. Now, um, as for Rachel, yeah, I mean, what do you even say? What do you even say about a person like this? She's just, she's just unhinged, mental deserves absolutely no one and there's a reason why her friends are just constantly blocking her and yeah getting rid of her she sounds awful and now for our final post of this episode how to get fired by your hairdresser so my amazing beautiful super cool mother-in-law owns a high-end hair salon and is a very popular and well-respected hairdresser in our large tourist city as everyone knows, the pandemic was particularly hard on many businesses and especially in the way salons operate in general. When they were finally able to open again for the first time, wearing a mask was the law. Salons that did not follow this law were actively being fined and or closed. On top of that, my husband was diagnosed with a rare form of lymphoma around that time, which makes him extremely vulnerable to any and all colds, flus and infections. This is where the real trouble started. My mother-in-law had a longtime client named Janet, but she absolutely refused to put on a mask. My mother-in-law explained to Janet that she had to wear one because it's the law and she could be fined far more than her styling costs. Janet doubled down, ranting about her rights as an American, blah, blah, blah. My mother-in-law pushed back again with the law and the fines, but still, Janet remained unmoved. My mother-in-law now got as serious as a mum can get. She explained once again that her son has cancer. But Janet rolls her eyes. Yeah, I know, I read it on Facebook. Then you understand that if I get sick, I can't see my son or it could kill him. So what? Isn't he terminal anyway? Oh my gosh. Pause for shock while everyone in the salon just freezes for a second. My mum backs away from the chair. You need to leave. Janet, Pikachu face. What? Why? Then the second hairdresser gets involved. Get out, get out now, get out before I call the police. And that is how you get fired from your very expensive hairdresser. How anyone can think their freaking bleach blonde hairdo is more important than the hairdresser's child is beyond me. You know that woman has scissors in her hand, right? Finally, a little note about my husband's cancer. Yes, at the time his diagnosis was terminal, but thanks to advances in science, he's now living with cancer instead of dying from it. However, he is still quite vulnerable to germs and viruses because it's lymphoma. Okay, well, that is good news at least, um, but... Yeah, I mean, saying, isn't he terminal anyway? That is just absolutely awful. I mean, it just doesn't get much worse than that, really. It doesn't get much worse. And it just, it clearly comes from someone that just doesn't understand cancer at all. Has never dealt with it or has never had anyone in their family deal with it. It's just obvious. Um, and, and to be honest, I feel like she should have just been like punched in the face. Sometimes physical violence, guys, has to be the answer because otherwise you'll never learn. Now, I wouldn't actually ever preach that seriously, but genuinely, at moments like this, how do you make this person learn that what they're saying is just disgraceful? And how do you stop them from doing it again or just changing their perspective? You have to punch them in the face. That is the moral of the story. My father demands an apology after 10 years of no contact. When I was 11 years old, my parents divorced. My father cheated a lot and my mother forgave him every time because she wanted to keep the family together. But then when I was 11, my father cheated again and ran off with this woman. What followed was a huge divorce with a lot of fighting and arguing. The only thing my father didn't want was us as children. It was decided that I had to go to my father at the weekends. Because where I live, divorces go through the courts and they think it's important that children continue to see both their parents. During these weekends, I was used more as a kind of Cinderella by my father and his girlfriend. And I was systematically abused mentally and physically. Every time I made a mistake in their eyes, didn't do something the way they wanted, didn't get things done on time because I had a lot to do, I was beaten with objects or just by hand. My father's favorite thing was his belt and my stepmother liked to use an electric fly swatter which gives off electric shocks when you turn it on so that you can kill the fly without crushing it, so to speak. If you hold it against your skin with the metal part, you'll get a pretty hard electric shock. 
To this day, I'm terrified of electric fly swatters. Even though where I live, they are very common household things. I managed to hide the abuse for years by wearing baggy clothes with long sleeves, whether it was summer or winter. Because of this, I quickly became the weird kid at school and had no friends. The abuse had enormous mental consequences, but I wanted to persevere because I was afraid that if I stopped coming on weekends, my father's girlfriend would work out her anger on my little sister. She was only five when my parents broke up. I withdrew more and more to my room when I was with my mother so that I didn't have to talk to her. My mother is a sweetheart. She's really sweet and friendly and only wanted the best for me. She thought I was having trouble with the divorce and that I was starting to go through puberty. She regularly suggested that I go to a therapist, but I always didn't want to because I wanted to protect my sister. When I was 16, my gym teacher found out about the bruises because I suffered an injury during sports class and she had to look at my legs. As a result, child protection was immediately called to see that I was covered in them. My mother was so shocked that she kept me and my sister at home from that moment on. The judge decided that the contact arrangements were terminated and that we as children no longer had to visit my father. My father has always blamed me for the fact that he no longer sees his children. He called me a bad daughter and said that I should never have told anyone what happened in our home. He felt that it was no one's business and that it was good parenting, that it would make me hard and grow up to be a strong woman who could serve her husband in this way that if I behaved better and did what I was told, I wouldn't have to be beaten. 10 years have passed since then. Because of what happened and the fact that we lived in a small village, everyone knows what occurred and what he and his now wife did to me. I moved far away from them and cut off all contact. I went to therapy to learn to deal with everything. I have a very sweet partner who supports me and also helps me to overcome my fears that I developed because of my father. I regularly have panic attacks at home and I'm afraid of being home alone. We bought a video doorbell so I can see who is at the door without having to go to it because I'm afraid that he'll find out my address and come to see me. He's already tried to find out my address a few times through my sister since she has been in contact with him again for a few years. Her reasoning was that they've not done anything to her and they were always kind to her so she sees no reason not to visit regularly. Hmm, that is interesting. Recently, I received a letter from my father through my sister in which he demanded that I apologize for my behavior and that because of me, the entire village thinks he is a disgrace. Yeah, I wonder why. In the letter, he said that he is getting older and his hearing and vision are getting worse. He demands that I apologize to him and that I introduce him to my partner who really doesn't want that because he knows my entire history. He thinks he's been a good father and that being raised by my mother has made me soft and that I am now a bad woman because I'm pursuing a career outside the home in biology. My sister tells me that I should just say sorry and that he will really leave me alone afterwards. He really just wants to hear that he was a good father and that I regret talking to people 10 years ago when they saw my bruises. But I really don't want to. But my sister and father's family keep pestering me to say that I should just do it so that he can close it off and the village will no longer find him a shame. I really don't want to and I haven't slept at night because of it. I don't know what to do anymore and my partner tries to keep me calm so I don't have to think about it anymore because it gives me panic attacks. But my father and his family keep insisting and nagging me to do it by sending me messages on social media and calling or whatsapping me. I keep blocking them, but they create new throwaway accounts to reach me or give letters and messages to my sister so that she can give them to me. I didn't tell my mother about this because she already feels very guilty that she didn't notice the abuse for all those years. So, what do you think? Should I just apologize to get it over with? Absolutely not. Why would you ever apologize? I mean, this is such a sad story. You can't ever even think about apologizing. And to be honest, I think it's very tragic that OP is even considering it and it shows to me that the level of abuse that he suffered throughout his entire life. I mean, we know what physical effects it had, but mentally, the fact that you're in this situation and you're still even considering apologizing to your dad just shows the torture, the mental torture that you must have gone through and the impact it still has on you today. Like if I put myself in that situation, obviously, you know, objectively, and I haven't had all the all the abuse that you've suffered for all those years, I just say, straight off the bat no why would i ever apologize obviously he has to apologize to me and even then there's nothing he can even possibly say to excuse what he did for all those years but because you're in this situation and you've had to deal with this for so long and it's clearly had such an effect on you you're considering apologizing i don't know the worst person in all of this by the way i mean 
she's not the worst person. Obviously, your dad and stepmom are. But a close second slash third, your sister. What is she doing? Maybe she just doesn't understand. Maybe she was too young. But I don't know. I feel like she should be listening to you and just hearing what you did to, to help her all those years ago. And surely, like, if she hears about your experiences with her own dad and stepmom, she would have to side with you. But but no, she's she's doing the opposite. I don't know. Maybe it's because she was too young to remember. Maybe it's because your dad and stepmom are extremely manipulative. Maybe it's because she is a bad person. Maybe it's a combination of all three. I'm not sure. I just feel like you've been completely left on your own here, OP. And it's it's a good thing that your mum is is as sweet as she is. But my word, you know, three really bad people here. Now for our next entitled parent story. You called CPS because a toddler was running around naked. I was visiting with a very good friend of mine this weekend after a mutual friend's birthday party. We'd all gone, but it wasn't really a place conducive to quiet enjoyment of a friend's company. There was lots of noise and lights and sugary birthday goodies that everyone partook in, including my friend's two sons. Now, one of them isn't one yet, and the other is balls deep into the terrible twos. The answer for everything is no even when the answer was meant to be yes. It's hilarious, mostly because I can go home. My friend and his wife, they're tired, understandably so. So we were sitting in front of the TV and minding the boys while my buddy's wife wanted some time not spent in the immediate vicinity of her offspring, which honestly, fair. She got drove off in her car and went, I know not where, and we divided the labor equally. My friend had the kid who couldn't walk yet and they were curled up on the couch. I think the intent was for a quiet nap. Me, well, I was stuck with the two-year-old and we had beef. At one point in the birthday party, I was playing ski ball at an arcade and offered my last ball to the two-year-old. He wound up like he was on a baseball mound and I wound up having to go, no, 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 and intervene. He's yet to forgive me for this transgression. So my charge for a little bit decided watching Bluey was for suckers and he was going in search of adventure. And I was following him around because that's what you do when someone places the welfare of their child in your hands. The whole time, he's sulking and glaring at me every time he realizes I'm still behind him. It was so hard not to laugh because it was so overblown and dramatic. So we're in the boys' room and the kid I'm watching is currently trying to cram his little body under his bed and shouting about wanting mama. Tough luck, kid. Mama's taking a break. You're stuck with me. And then there's a knock at the door. It's a caseworker from CPS and a police officer. I didn't realize this at the time as I was trying to make sure the kid's head wouldn't actually get stuck under the bed. I'd never live it down. My buddy answers the door and is rather alarmed to see the pair waiting there. Then they came in and my buddy shouted for me to come back to the living room with the kid. So I scoop up my charge and he starts squirming and squawking because he wanted to be under the bed. And clearly this is not under the bed. Matter of fact, this is the opposite and he promptly shuts up because strangers. The caseworker goes on to explain that they've gotten reports about toddlers being left outside in the snow with only a diaper on, being left naked to run around the house, bruises on the kids, etc., etc. For the uninitiated, most toddlers cannot stand wearing clothes. They want out of them immediately. Even the hint of a chance at ditching the clothing and they'll go for it. The cop looks around for a moment, says something to the CPS worker and then leaves. I sit with a two-year-old who was clothed by the way and my buddy does all of the talking. I can tell that he is furious but I didn't really know why at the time. The caseworker wanders around the house a little bit, takes a look at both kids, then shrugs and says he can't see any evidence behind the report but that everyone has to be investigated. They'll be in touch, but it won't be a home visit unless new evidence or reports come to light. After the caseworker leaves, my buddy hands me the not quite one-year-old, takes out his phone and goes into the basement and promptly starts screaming at the top of his lungs into the phone. The one-year-old just went back to napping and the two-year-old showed some survival instincts. He just looked at me and said, daddy mad and watched TV with me and his brother. My friend's mother had some sort of mental illness flare up on her out of nowhere. I don't really know the details because it's not my business, but what little I did hear about was horrific enough. Evidently, on grandma's last visit, the two-year-old managed to escape the clutches of bath time and wound up making a beeline straight out the open front door into the snow. He realized this was a poor life choice seconds after escaping, mostly from face planting into snow after tripping, and struggled not at all to be brought back in for bath time. Why was the door open? Grandma's new boyfriend was rather drunk and attempting to bring in a pile of Christmas gifts that were arriving in late January. 
He fell down the stairs when he tried opening the door So they just propped the door open to allow easier offloading in a nutshell stuff happens Kids have minds of their own and do their own thing He was never in any actual danger just a two-year-old doing two-year-old things The fact that grandma twisted the event in such a fashion honestly confuses me Especially since the root cause of the kid getting out at all wasn't even my friend's fault The really fed up part about the report though The reason there was a cop there was because grandma told cps that her son was an alcoholic with a mean streak when he was drunk And that he kept a gun at the door He does keep a gun by the door to be fair It's a double barrel shotgun and a small safe with a keypad because he lives in the boonies and it's not unusual to see things like bears To the best of my knowledge, the only time the gun is fired is at range, so my buddy and his wife can use the weapon competently if the need should arise. Her own son, though. Now, some parents can be difficult, all right? I I hold my hands up. Some grandparents can be difficult, some parents can be difficult, um, and, you know, not always is it a good idea to have your parent look after your child. I do feel like this is one of those occasions where maybe you don't let your mum look after your kid anymore. Um, I do though have to say that there's there's levels to this game calling cps on your own son That is mad. I don't really understand even why she did that. Okay. Sorry She didn't call cps someone else did but then sorry the, the grandma saying that her own son was an alcoholic with a mean streak is Absolutely mental. That's the reason why the cop was there. Of course. I don't know like it's bad enough that someone calls cps Um, I think yeah, it happens you could say but also it's a bit it's not great I mean a two-year-old being able to run outside on their own It's very dangerous as we saw with a, a story not long ago You know a kid abandoned on their own outside can have serious repercussions But then yeah doubling down and saying oh actually no, it's um because of my son who's an alcoholic mad and look I get it. She has a mental illness Does that excuse this does that allow for this? I would say no, obviously you need more context there, but yeah, I think the easiest thing to do is just, you know, maybe you don't cut her off, but just don't let her ever look after your kid.